Okay. <laughs> I think they can probably see us now. Hello, friends. Uh, we're <laughs> Be nice to see you. Uh-uh. <laughs> Not today. Uh, this is our one-year celebration for the Island of Fall campaign. I can't believe it's been a year. A year that we have been streaming Dungeons and Dragons uh, mm -hmm. on the internet, which is wild. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time. Uh, yeah. It's very, very exciting. So we're going to be giving away uh, a set of dice from Dice Envy, a shirt from my merch store, and a uh, and a candle from Cantrip Candles. Um, all you got to do, type exclamation mark celebration to be entered into the giveaway. You do have to be here at the end of the stream and in the chat and able to respond at the end of the stream in order to win. It'll be one person per prize. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm Don Boosted Gorilla, and I play... Finwin Lightbell. <clears throat> Finwin Lightbell. Yeah. In this campaign. A beautiful halfling man. Yeah. Very young boy. Yeah. I play Bran. <laughs> Come <Paul>. on. <laughs> yeah. The only original character remaining. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. Welcome back, Finwin. <laughs> so, uh, last time on the Island of Fall, when we recovered from the epic battle with Dane Firehand while we were escaping with the elvish citizens and women and children uh, and the druids from Endon, we were ambushed on the road by Dane Firehand, blah, 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 blah. Two people died. Grimdar died. Grimdar died. We've since then seen Grimdar's, Grimdar's body on the ground in one of the prison cells. Mm -hmm. uh, Bran and his new... Not really friend, but friend Finwin, uh, a young, approximately 20-ish year old halfling boy with bright gingerish orange hair, beautiful freckled cheeks, but very dirty skin, uh, who's a digger here for Dane here in his dungeons. Um, Bran and Finwin manage to utilize the bones from their smush to break out of the jail cell uh, after we saw Dane come down and intimidate Bran by breaking Queen Venya's hand in front of him and telling him that, you know, he's he's free to leave whenever he wants. He just has to get by Dane. Um, Bran recognized the peril of the situation uh, and instead chose to escape with Finwin. Uh, we then explored much of the, eh, probably about like half to two thirds of this lowest level of the dungeon, uh, successfully dodging many of the patrols and guardsmen of the Grey Dwarves. Uh, we did find a creepy, mysterious, like, twisted-looking gray dwarf who was covered in uh, boils and grotesque kind of little, um, like, seeping sacks of fluids on his face. Like, he's, he's a, he's a gross-looking man. Uh, he was in one of the jail cells that Finwin talked about. He proclaimed that he's been down here for ten years, and he really fucking hates Dane. Really fucking hates Dane. Um, we decided to not free this man and instead continue our uh, escape on our own. Uh, that was where we got through and saw at the one uh, southeast corner of the uh, lowest level of this dungeon here. We did find a, a locked obsidian door that through a small little uh, window pane, we could see a mountain dwarf looking man who was lying mostly nude, unconscious, on the ground, uh, whispering and moaning for a man named Bran. That's how you know it's Grimdar. Or Most, a, mostly nude. Or a, yeah, right? <laughs> That's how you know. Even in prison, he's gone to sleep naked. <laughs> huh, the shackles? Ooh, I feel better. <laughs> this is home now. <laughs> uh, we also did see that Dane Firehand does indeed have the same tattoo on his right arm that Grimdar bears on his of the pickaxe the Warhammer, and the skull in the center. Um, as we continued up, Finwin had previously, earlier in the episode, been forced by Dudrick Coldbeard, one of Dane's good lieutenants, to return to the hole and continue digging. Uh, as Finwin excavated down deeper into the dark, uh, he encountered a mysterious purple warm and but cold sludge where once it contacted his skin, it chilled him to the bone and it felt like there were small creatures crawling all over his flesh, creatures that he could not see whatsoever. Uh, he did successfully get pulled out after going up and then down and then up and then down and then up. <laughs> he did successfully get pulled out by Dudrick Colbeard, who told him, don't touch me. 
<laughs> and I'm glad I went up because I was considering going down and just pushing my way into that stuff. So that would have been the end of Finwin. Yeah, so. Finwin would have been a, a very different person <laughs> really had that happened. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we went up and we saw Dr. Uh, D. Vito. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the local doctor here on the lowest level of the dungeon, great doctor, performed a fantastic, fantastic excision mm -hmm. of the larva-looking egg sac mm -hmm. embedded into Finwin's palm. Mm -hmm. uh, Finwin was able to return to Bran. That was when they made their daring escape. Uh, we recognize that as we got to the areas uh, where a, a, a young goblin woman rescued us as we were hiding in the hole. Uh, named Mafsi. Uh She warned us that we are not capable of going upstairs unless we have one of the token passes to permit um, uh, travel through the kind of wall of force that exists at the, the gates or the staircase leading up to the next level. We then remembered that we were told that someone who does a great job recently would be awarded a token. Finwin, had he still been in his cell, would have soon been awarded a token, but we did remember that Dr. D. Vito had done a fantastic job with the surgery on Finwin and would have been awarded a pass. We did sneak into Dr. D. Vito's <laughs> doctor's office <laughs> um, and stole a small little envelope that had his name on it, opened it up, and inside was an obsidian-shaped coin with small little ridges. We went back to an area that the northwest side uh, that Mathsy led us to, that is the check post here. Uh, inserted the obsidian coin and the wall of force kind of dispersed in front of us, no longer obscuring or preventing our passage through. And as we walked forward at the height of the staircase, that looks like it goes up about 50-ish feet, uh, we heard the creaking and sliding of a stone door opening and a small glimmer of light beginning to shine down. And the three of you, the two of you, and Mafsi are standing here at the edge at the base of the stairs, there are walls to the right and to the left of you. I immediately fold back to the right On behind the one of these walls. Okay. <sighs> you see the stone door just... Yeah, I'm going to duck to the left. And Mafsy just kind of like curls under around your feet. I don't know who that is. Shh. Shh. It could be anyone. And you just hear uh, uh, soft footsteps kind of like smashing down on the... S sorry. Soft, soft, soft sorry. Foot sorry. Is soft it soft or smashing? So, Gotta the, clarify. Were the, the boots footstep. made for walking? Or is <laughs> <laughs> so soft, like you can hear kind of like a leather or cloth is what's contacting. Okay, great. Not but the great. person is heavy and dense, and that's why it's like dense, okay, but it it's is, not it clang, is it is, clang. It is, uh, sure. It is brick, 100%. <laughs> 100%. Oh, oh. <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Welcome to my dungeon. Oh, God. <laughs> Get me to the hole. <laughs> I'll fill it. <laughs> brick, you're back. <laughs> we need a brick puppet. <laughs> so uh, you, you hear these footsteps continuing to kind of uh, slowly work their way down. Uh, and then you hear th this voice uh, kind of whispering aloud. And it's echoing down the hallway. It will work this time. I mean, do we... Oh, I don't recognize the voice. Roll for history. <laughs> you won't recognize this voice. Let me know it, John! <laughs> Tell me! <laughs> Tell me Tell my Tell me history. with my 20! <laughs> uh, you know that this voice is someone who's been... You've only heard in the hallways. You've never seen this man. But you know that this is a man who has been described to you as... The doctor. Oh, great. <laughs> Lovely. It's great. Let's, in a, by who? In a good way? In a bad way? We'll say uh, Dane uh, and Dudrick Colebeard. And, okay. Uh, you know, they've, they've been talking about the doctor and the experiments he's been performing mm. on the goblins so far. Okay, yeah, no, not coming out. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -mm. It will work this time. No, it won't. <laughs> you hear the footsteps continuing to kind of smash down, you know, mm. softly, but smashing. Cause <laughs> softly, <laughs> softly <laughs> smashing. Smack, smack, smack. Actually, genuinely, kind of like that. Okay. 
so you, you continue to hear these footsteps coming down, mm -hmm. and you hear another voice kind of responding back to this. Oh, it will not. You know better. Is it the same person? Do I, do I, is it? <laughs> There's only one set of footsteps, correct? Correct. Great. <laughs> Very good. Oh. I'm going to ready my sickles <laughs> and hide behind the wall. They will know what is done here. You have to try. It will be better. How close is he? I mean, it sounds like he's pretty close towards the base of the steps now. Great. Okay. Which side did you duck to? The left. Oh, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Why, why are you apologizing? I was gonna, I was gonna bless you, but I can't. Too far away. He's gotta touch you. Uh, Do you reach across no. the opening? <laughs> just, just these bare hands. Just yeah, he's reading. insane. He might not know. I mean, oh my. <laughs> you can if you would like. No. I'll make a perception roll and we'll. Sure, tell me if it's a, like a one. We'll roll the dice. We're not doing it, but if you fail, then we're absolutely 100%. I'll, if we can like preload. We'll preload it. So he rolled an 11. <laughs> so he'd be noticing okay, some nope. things. Mm -mm. He's, he's mm -mm. an aware-ish man. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> okay, so yes, yeah, so you, you hear these footsteps now kind of clambering down right at the edge of where you are, <laughs> and they suddenly stop. I pull my goggles over my eyes. I'm not getting my... Sp uh, he's not spitting in my eyes. <laughs> They're going on. What? Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Not spitting in these eyes. <laughs> Did you say that out loud? <laughs> Nobody's spitting in Finwin's eyes. <laughs> Nobody spits in Finwin's eyes. Only I spit in theirs. Huh? <laughs> so there, the footsteps kind of stop. Do I see him put on his <laughs> goggles? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Time to get digging. <laughs> So the footsteps stop, and you hear nothing from this this hallway, this staircase. And then there's suddenly a just, who's out there? It's one of <laughs> friends. I don't know what he I I don't know what he said. I assume. I mean, you hear him. You hear him speaking. Yeah, but that. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't. Okay. Uh. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Nobody's moving? No. I'm not fucking okay. moving. Nope. Fuck okay. that. We'll see uh, how many. Okay. So you see at one time two people stepping out of this staircase. You see two identical small looking gray dwarves where they've got just kind of like frazzled white hair. It looks long and sleek. So it's it's only around the edges, but it goes very low and down to like shoulder length. It's platinum like white, but it looks grayed out. So it looks kind of dull or like brittled. So it's not it's not sleek where it's smooth and like brushed. Uh huh. Uh, you can see that he's got a very patchy, like half shaved on this side and completely grown beard out coming down on this side. So like this side of the face is shaved. This side of the face has a, a thin, scraggly, uh, unkept beard. Uh, it is also the same color as his hair. You can see that the eyes as this man walks out are a, a milky, diluted gray looking color. And he's walking forward and he's got just this thin white shirt on. And he's got, like, short, tannish-looking leather pants. And then he's got thin leather boots. So it looks almost like, uh, it, it, I guess the best way to associate them or compare them is, you know the running shoes where they form actually around your toes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has those, but, like, in leather. So, like, you can see his the shape and outline of his feet. Like, all of his clothing is very form-fit to okay. him. Okay. And just both of them step out simultaneously mm -hmm. right in front of you. And then one looks to one side and one looks to the other. <laughs> Are you going to attempt to attack? Yeah, before he looks. Okay. So, yeah, he steps down. That's why. Oh. Roll your damage. Nice. Oh, boy. What is it again? 26. Plus four. So, eight plus sneak attack. 
6, 9, 12, 16. 16? So you turn... 16 plus... The 4 eight. or the 8, so yeah. 24. Yeah. So you turn with your sickle and just one hand and just swipe very quickly at the neckline of this man as he steps out and just begins to turn his head to look over in your direction, and your sickle swipes through, and the illusion dissipates. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Who's in my house? Does the one in front of me dissipate? Yes. No, no, no. It doesn't dissipate. You see its mouth moving, and you hear a voice echoing out from it. Who's in my house? Who are you? <laughs> doctor. Doctor who? <laughs> no, doctor. The doctor is in. How can I help you? <laughs> we we want to get get out. Get get out. What? <laughs> get out? What do you mean get out? Leave. And he just kind of looks back up the staircase. That way? Uh-huh. No, no. Experiments are this way. You must stay. I do the Danny DeVito. <laughs> no, Adam. <laughs> Is he distracted? Yeah. You. <laughs> sure. You have advantage. Attack him again. Oh, God. It's another illusion, please. <laughs> Oh, God! Oh! Five plus eight! Thirteen. Thirteen's yeah. still gonna hit. Okay. Don't worry about your damage. You swipe and the <laughs> illusion dissipates. I <laughs> rolled <Level> a six. <laughs> yeah, you swipe through this one and the illusion dissipates. Okay. Who's in my house? Where's it coming from? It's echoing throughout the room. It looks. It feels more like it's further into the room, over towards the area where the podium was, where you inserted the coin onto the top. Uh, I'm Dr. Vito. No, you're not. I know Dr. Vito. Hired him. He's my friend, not yours. Are you in that box? No. Where are you? I'm right here. And you feel like breath against oh. your neck. <laughs> well, I wouldn't I have seen I, that. I whip around. Huh? I wouldn't have seen him. No, you don't see anything. I whip around. You whip around. You don't see anyone. I don't. I don't see you. You can't see the doctor. The doctor can see you. Oh, God. <laughs> God. Okay. How close am I to the stairs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're right at the base oh, of the God. stairs. I fucking I'm dart. Out. I fucking dart up the stairs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just glance at Finwin. Oh, I, I glance at him. And I just fucking... Paul, it's a trap. These are the Mario, uh, Inf these are the Mario Infinite stairs. We no, can't no, get up. No, no, no. no. <laughs> we can't get up. So you begin running up the yeah, stairs? Yeah. Woo! Okay. So as you begin running up the stairs, you get like halfway up the stairs and then you feel this great whoosh like you run through a curtain. And you see him appear back at the bottom of the stairs. Ah! <laughs> I knew it! No <laughs> shit! You in my house. It's a fun house to be in. The doctor <laughs> loves... His house. Oh, I am going to start casting oh, sacred flame everywhere. Oh, he's a I'm not. No, like here, here, <laughs> here, <laughs> here, <laughs> here, here. Sure. I'm yeah. Like, you you just begin sporadically casting sacred flame, yep. illuminating just, like spots, and you just hear him begin to laugh. Just. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never find doctor. I would like to detect magic in the area. Sure. Okay. You don't need to roll for detect magic. Okay. So you cast detect magic. Uh, you can. Oh, I, I thought I. I just. I don't have the spell detect. Oh, magic. oh, oh! You just like, mean like in terms of yeah. Arcana. I just want to like feel for arcana sources. Sure. Then go right ahead. Uh, ten plus. What would that be? Plus. Arcana is intelligence. It's up at the top for okay. your skills. So eleven. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, eleven. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you mostly sense magic emanating out from up to that midpoint of the stairs. You can still see up to the stone door at the height of the stairs, and you sense magic emanating out from the podium, from the small box that is on the height of it. Uh, and Mathsy's just, like, shivering in the corner, just 
her head like against her knees she's sitting down just wrapping her arms around her knees just shaking violently i don't like the doctor i don't like the doctor do you, do you know anything do you <laughs> know anything? <laughs> got him shit <laughs> shit do I'll you know it. anything I'll lass <laughs> go, you know, i'll ask her dude what do you know about him i'm dead <laughs> oh wait oh, i'm dead fuck. <laughs> shit <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Fuck! It's been a year. Makes makes bad people. Makes them different. Different not, how? Not like they were before. I'm still I'm still illuminating ah, everywhere. Ah, what do you mean? What's going on? <laughs> are there are there any rocks around? I mean, Little yeah, pebbles. There, there's, I'm there's picking small up a pebble, scattered pebbles, throwing it up the stairs towards that. So you throw the pebble. And the pebble gets approximately halfway up the stairs, and then it just disappears in a kind of quick wisp of pop, and it clanks down, down at the, the base of the stairs. stairs. Oh, you I'm can't go. get through my door. How do we get through? What do we have to do? <laughs> Why would I help you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Please? <laughs> would you like me to Roll do for a persuasion? <laughs> would you like me to... Do a perception check to sure. attempt to see him? I mean, he has the spell invisibility. I still see his breath? I mean, it's not like it's that cold down here where you would see... Uh, f 14. 14? I mean, I guess like... <laughs> <laughs> okay! <laughs> <laughs> you have to have the key to get through... What's the key? <laughs> it's a key. Give oh. us give us your key. <laughs> Roll for persuasion. <laughs> give us a key. Just give us a key. Ooh, 17. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 19. No, <laughs> so close. <laughs> please. <laughs> Pretty please. Oh, get it. A <laughs> one. <laughs> Fuck. Please. Do you want any of my keys? <laughs> Yes, what keys do you have? I got bone keys. Oh, what kind of bones? Smush bones. Smush? Mm hmm. From the smush. Mm hmm. Don't use them. Okay. Failed. What? Uh, uh, failed experiments. Not keys. Don't you remember? The goblins go into the <laughs> no, smush. No, uh-uh. Yeah. No. Yeah. Don't re I don't recall that at all. Yeah, remember he, killed, anyway, the, he killed the annoying goblin? Just rats. D Dane, do you don't all remember those, that? All those No, all you've, those been, you've been eating rats. your friends for years. Mm, You're a terrible them. person, mm. Finway. Mm. Could use some of that smush. <laughs> Finway, you're a terrible, terrible person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Mapsy's just still shaking on the ground in the corner. She turned friend to slime. Did you say she? She. Or he turned friend mm, to slime. I'm going to call bullshit on that. <laughs> he turned friend okay. to slime. I was going to say she became slime, oh, but I wanted, sure, sure, I wanted sure, sure. to ensure that yeah, you yeah, understood yeah, yeah, that yep. he was the one that made sure, it happen. Sure, sure. He turned friend to slime, sludge, goop. What, do you know where he is? Doctor? I can't see him. I'm going to go look at the box. Okay. So you approach the box? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like a small stone little, you know, square. It's only uh, like a, a foot-ish, two foot can high. Can I fit my hand into the slot? Into the we, slot? Yeah, we put the coin in. Yeah. <sighs> so you just kind of like... I want to crane game that coin out. <laughs> okay, so I mean, you reach down, and I mean, your fingers don't get all the way down. So I did. I did say that you do have long, obnoxiously long you fingers. Did say I'll that. give you the opportunity. <laughs> you did say that. Roll a dexterity check. Oh, see if you're did you didn't crush it. I thought it crushed it. The coin. Yeah. The coin slides down. Yeah. It doesn't crush it. Okay. Mm. But just for the sake of, if any coins maybe had just fallen off to the side and not gone down the the tunnel at the base yeah. of it. The roll is a ten plus two for dex. So yeah, yeah. I mean you're you're kind of like reaching around and you feel a stone basin. Okay. Where you're feeling like the dust and the gravel kind of scratching against your fingertips. <clears throat> Don't steal passes. What do you do with the passes? Well, you go upstairs. 
Yeah, but we you're not letting us out. We put a pass in. You don't get to leave. Yeah, but we put the pass in. You're not to go. We... Experiment needs to be done first. No, 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 no. Dane said we could leave whenever we wanted. Dane did not say. No, he did. No, he well, did. he did, He actually though. did. He that's actually word for did. word. If you would like to see insight check me and see if I'm lying, sure. that's great. Word for word, you can leave whenever you I mean, want. Yeah, no, he rolled an 18, so he knows. Dane did not know about experiment scheduling. That's that's not it's Dane's his problem. Prison. He yeah. did say we could leave whenever we want. We had a little pass thing. Uh, very well, go. <laughs> okay. See you later. Bye. I walk up the stairs again. Okay. So you walk up the stairs and you <laughs> right back to the bottom of the stairs as you go through the curtain of the dimension door that's here. Uh, how, on a long, <laughs> how long does Dimension Door stay up? Uh, a, an hour, I believe. God damn it. I'm going to do the same thing, but backwards. Yeah, I mean, you just... <laughs> I do have Detect Magic. I lied. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you kind of hear, like, a, a single set of footprints once more going out back that hallway, and you hear him just kind of muttering out, Get the one who makes rocks. <laughs> I will, you're here, you're here. I will you're here attempt to follow him mm -hmm. without him noticing. Sure. So we want to stealthily walk backwards this way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're just kind of creeping along. And you, you continue to hear the footsteps, and you hear what sounds like the clanking of, like, a little lantern. But you see no light illuminating out. Of so course, you hear that naturally. kind of, like, metal clanging of the circular portion at the top dinging back and forth. If I close my eyes, do I see him? No. <laughs> Shit! Damn it! <laughs> it's been... a good thought, though. <sighs> but no, it's genuinely just the spell invisibility. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will make rocks instead. This power will be mine. Extract. Extract. That's nice. That's really lovely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's wonderful. You're a good doctor. <laughs> so I can tell about where he is if yeah. I can hear the footsteps. And, mm -hmm. and you hear him still speaking. Just just casually walking through this hallway with two sickles in the air. Yup. I'm just hold on. I'm gonna walk behind him and just bless him. Okay. No me. Yeah. So you bless you. You bless yourself. How long does that last? Ah, ah. It's a cantrip. A minute. It's a first level spell. Yeah. Bless or guidance. Sorry, guidance. Yes. So I can't do both, just just him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> na, 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 na. So yeah, you cast yeah, guidance. Following him all the way back to the stone maker. Yeah. So we come back down the path, uh, and you can see that he he begins walking back down and makes a left turn. Okay. So this was the area you were familiar with that you came out of the small hole that Massey had dug, and he's walking forward to this spot that she had called the excavation site. Deeper. We following. Is he near the hole? Oh, no, no, no. It's not the hole. Okay. Different spot. Okay. There's the hole, and then there's a different offshoot spot okay. that is disconnected from this. So this is what's called the tunnel. Oh, oh, shit. Mm. Oh, no. This is the tunnel that leads to the excavation okay. site. Okay, yep. Yeah, so we're continuing to follow along. Yeah. We we continue to hear him just kind of muttering as the the tunnel begins to take a little bit of a bend uh, to the right, heading further in a straight line south. And f at the head of this, you can see the tunnel concludes and opens up into this very large, very wide, very high cavernous area where you can see droplets of water from stalactites extending down from the height just dripping and you hear that ahead but you hear the drip and then you hear no contact with the ground mm. and as you look forward like kind of peeping you know into the general area of it because you're you're about 20-ish feet away from this opening and you can hear that his voice begins to now echo once more as he's made his way into the cavernous area of the excavation site you can see this great chasm so the previous one was kind of almost like a lightning bolt in the ground where it was thinner and narrow this one is a great chasm where it looks 
25-ish feet wide, like 25 feet in diameter, because it's not a, a full, complete circle, but it's in that general spacing. And you just hear the voice kind of echoing around, and you begin to see rocks kind of sliding off one of the outskirts to the east, falling into, and dust being kicked up into the air, falling down into this great chasm here in the ground. Mm-hmm. So you guys, the three of you, are just here at the entrance, and you look in, and you see this. It is not remotely like the other locations here in Dane's Fortress. The other locations are uh, well-performed with stonemason, like marble. Well, not not elven yeah. marble, but like stone and granite, where everything is smooth and clean. You've been seeing obsidian doors. You've been seeing, you know, generic, like, basic rune works in terms of just, like, instructions on where things are. This is uncharted territory. Oh, this is dark. Good. This is dank. This is filled with freshly broken rock. It's 88% dank. It's fucking dank. Like you, that, like, air just hits you and it's just, ugh, and you smell something grotesque. Does it smell like a dead body? No, it smells... It smells putrid, but not like uh, rotting or decay. It smells putrid like foul, like rotting food almost. Okay. So. Mm-hmm. 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 And you see these footsteps continuing to go around the edge of this chasm. Mm-hmm. And it's just walking. Around and around. I mean, I'm, I'm going to follow. I'm going. We're going to continue to follow him. So, I mean, it's a narrowish walkway, but it's 10 feet wide. So you guys would be able to walk side by side if you would like or in a, nar- in a straight line. Which would you prefer? I think straight line. Yeah. Straight line? Yep. Okay. Make so. the goblin go first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared, mister. Shh. You'll be okay. Yeah, probably. Or you'll die like Elfmo. Ha! <laughs> 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 Why? <laughs> Why do you always do this, man? And the scream just like echoes out. I knew you were here. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to cast Sacred Flame where I hear the voice coming from. Sure. Just call down the light. Uh, deck save. It's a 20 with bonus. What? I rolled a 19. And he's God got a, damn. He, he only has a one bonus on decks. I'm going to say, no, we're not. <laughs> I'm going to persuade him. Sure. I'm going to grab this. Deceive him. I'm going to grab this book real quick. <laughs> Oh. He's he's insane. He totally has disadvantage on this. <laughs> Come on. Uh, Fuck this guy. Or he's the master of deceiving. 12. 12? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're out of time <laughs> that. Oh, he's not one! <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> this is so stupid. He almost gave us the key earlier, too. I was just let us leave. I don't see you. You don't see me. <laughs> the footsteps continue. Ah, <laughs> <right. laughs> oh, Finn, you hero. <laughs> so you, as you're walking around, uh, roll for perceptions, okay. just in terms of like the the ambient, like peripheral perception <laughs> that you're gonna have of the whole. Uh, so twelve, but. What's yeah. your passive? 18, 17, 18. 18. Okay. So as you're walking around and these rocks are also sliding out from under your feet and falling into the hole, you're not hearing any contact as okay. these rocks descend. Like, you are following this man at a very slow pace for minutes, and you still have not heard the first rocks make contact with the ground. Mm-hmm. Now, as you're walking, again, your dark vision is only going to permit you 60 feet down. But as you're just kind of <clears throat> looking, you get that rush of horrific, odious air of rotting, mm-hmm. like terrible decay. Mm-hmm. So again, not of people, but of some kind of like rotting meat just down at the base of this. Great. It's really big, too. Yeah. It's, like I said, about 25-ish, 30-ish feet in diameter. So it's a big fucking chasm. This is where Find Familiar would be very helpful. Meow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I was. I don't think I was able to take it yet. I, th- I think I can eventually take it. You send the trickster. The mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, disperse him at the end. Mm-hmm. So, 
Mathsy as she is just walking back behind both of you. <laughs> I don't want to be here. Okay. Do you want to wait at the entrance? Please. Okay. And she just begins turning and like carefully walking back with like one hand against the rocks. She's walking back towards the entrance. So you two... For the 60 feet down, approximately, that you can see into this hole, mm -hmm. you see that the rocks are coated in all areas of this in that sludge. Oh, great. That well, you were very familiar good. with. Yes. And that... Very good. That odor is just, like... It, it comes up in, like, waves, where it almost feels like something is just, every few seconds, just like... <laughs> yeah? <laughs> just like that? Yeah. I don't know. Have you been digging for? <laughs> I don't know. We will extract yes. its powers will be mine this time. No more talking to him, Finn. Okay. All right. No more talking <laughs> to him. We're not here. <laughs> He's fucking nuts. Yeah, clearly. More than you. What? Yeah. What's your dex? Can I just throw you in? <laughs> Now's the can you hand me a tissue? Now's yeah. the perfect time for a, a PvP <laughs> argument. <laughs> what oh, the fuck's in that hole? Oh, it's really neat. Tell me uh, what's down there. <laughs> oh, <whoa! laughs> I'm gonna cast my <laughs> minor illusion, distract him, so I have an advantage on the push. <laughs> Fucking, oh, and I'm just gonna boom. I'm gonna punt him. <laughs> 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 so we'll continue to follow. <laughs> Uh, so you can see that he actually kind of stops here at this southern side. So you guys are maybe 30-ish feet behind him in, like, the southwest corner of this circular room. Okay. Uh, and he stops, and he begins placing his hands on the wall. So you don't see hands. You just see these, like, puffs of dust and air pop out in the shapes of palms in the stone, like in the rock rubble right here. And you see his hands just begin to sink into the, the rock. So you now begin to see his hands and okay. you see his appearance breaking out because his concentration has to conclude for him to use this yep. spell. So you see his hands and his arms just begin to appear as he is just melding into the stone here. Mm -hmm. uh, let's bring down some light on him. You want to try to cast Sacred Flame? Yep. Sure. Let's uh, smack him around a little bit. Uh, 15? 15, uh, no, 21. 21 is the saving throw? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So Damn. 2d8? Uh, yes. This is also an illusion. It's a trick. <sighs> <laughs> oh, three. God damn it. Seven. So 10. 10. Okay. So you just quickly, as you see his shape beginning to form, cast Sacred Flame, a small little beam. Uh, for the, the focus point just kind of forms over his head and quickly bursts down over him, igniting him, and he just, like, shrieks in horror, mostly at the light, not at the pain. Just, yeah! <laughs> Right? Does he stop going no, through? No, he, he continues to meld in. I'm going to run up to mm -hmm. him, and what what was his appearance? He looks the same as the, the images prior. Okay, so he's not covered in slime. No, he is not. Okay, I'm going to grab him mm -hmm. and cast light so he lights up and is harmed by light. <laughs> sure. Okay, so you're running up, and I will roll to see how far along into the, the stone he is. 56%. Okay. So his, like... You know, most of his fronts, you're going to catch, like, his back and, like, his ass. Yep. But you cast light centered on him. Now, because his face is in the stone, he's not going to be affected by the traditional sunlight sensitivity in terms of being, okay. like, failing towards the perception or attack rolls or things like that. But he is going to be illuminated because we'll say that <laughs> since you cast it on an object, we'll say his pants. Okay. We'll say that his pants are giving off a bright light. Okay. So he dissipates into the stone as you cast light he disperses and is now invisible to you Fuck. but you know that you casted light on him you do not see light emanating out from this okay. at all from the wall 
I'm gonna touch the same point on the wall that he did. So you touch the two kind of yep. like locations for yep. where he, he put his handprints. Yep. So when you place your hands, you begin to feel your palms sinking into the stone. Finn, what are you doing? Going in. <laughs> Finn, uh, come on. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'll walk up to it and I'll, as he's sinking in, I'll just grab his leg to see if I just get pulled in. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> you. Why are you pulling my leg? You got nice boots, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so you land on your like feet slash knees. Okay. In a small prison cell. <sighs> Great. <laughs> you can see that on the ground is a fleshy looking mountain dwarf man. And you can see this man standing over him. And he's just waving his hands around his pants as he's casting to spell magic to break the illumination of your light. And he's just dispelling this, standing over this mountain dwarf man. How far away is he? Only about 15 feet. I want to toll the dead on him. Okay. Yeah, I make a wisdom save. Yep. It's me. 12 with bonus, so I'm going to fail because your okay. proficiency is 3, so that's a low on 11. So plus that your is 2d12. Yep. Because I'm not at hit point yep. maximum. Uh, 14 total. Okay. Okay, so yeah, you just <coughs> clap and create this dolorous bell that just begins ringing in his ears. <coughs> Stop! It will take him no matter what you do. What are you doing to him? Feed, extract. I'm gonna attempt to get behind the dwarf as he's. Well, he's he's turned around now to okay. look at both of you as you're landing in. Okay. So he looks and sees both of you, and now the mountain dwarf man is unconscious behind him on the ground. He's not shackled. He does not have the collar. He's just nude except for a small loincloth. <laughs> I'm going to look at his eyes. Are they still the milky white? No. Uh, they look now almost like they are a a lavenderish purple okay. in the iris, and they look like they've got weird, uh, like almost milky, like twinkles. So think of like a starlight, you know that okay, sure. that when you see a, a bright light in your vision and you see that kind of emanation out from around it, okay. you see small patches of that. Okay. <clears throat> Do I see a door to the left? You see, yes, a door, like. It's sealed an obsidian, in it's an to obsidian the rock. door, yes. Yes, sealed right. into the rock. Okay. Uh, as you see this man and you see his eyes, you see, uh, I mean, in essentially what was that small short space in which he was dispelling the light yep. prior to it having been dispelled, you can see, saw on the back of him, like on the back of his shoulders, you can see that there are horrible boils that have overgrown, oh, and you can see that there's an enormous, over his back on his spine, large oval-shaped bubble-looking sack, where inside of it is a small kind of squiggling-looking creature, because he's his shirt is form-fit, so like you can see it, and it's just... Does it look like it's like Olive? No, it looks like, squid-like. What, what, what Olive had on her, the bubble, or no? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. But the, the thing that is encased in this embryonic sack on his back looks squid-like. Oh, yeah. So then he turns around, and now we are at this point. It will feed. What will feed? And you see him begin to kind of, like, shake unnaturally, like... Oh, I'm going to rush him. <laughs> yep, rushing him. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah. Make Never your, let them finish the channel. Make your attack rolls. Uh, what are you doing? I'm going to run over and touch the dwarf and spare the dying. Okay. So, oh god. 17? 17 hits. Okay. So, 6 plus 4, it's 10. The first hit. Mm -hmm. Second attack? Am I still going? Yeah. Oh boy. Go right ahead. So 11 plus 8, so 19. Mm -hmm. So 9. 
And with my extra attack, I'm going to attempt to hit him in the back. Oh, God. And cleave into that. Yeah. So you're going to try to, like, position yourself around his back. Well, not really, since I'm taller. I can just, I'm going to, I hit him sure. twice. Sure, so you want to come, like, <laughs> over his head yeah. and kind of, like, swoop like that? Sure. Mm. Go right ahead. Ooh, six mm. plus eight. It's 14. 14. 14 hits. Oh, damn. All right. So, seven. Damage, okay. Do I get sneak attack damage? We'll say that he was simultaneously running up to touch the dwarf, and if this was at the dwarf's feet, or, yeah, I'll give it to you. So, no, that was a four, so eight. Oh, goodness. So, 15 plus uh, the initial seven. Okay. Oh boy! <laughs> I feel like we're not fighting the dwarf. <laughs> it feels like we're not. Okay, so yeah, I mean, as you kind of swoop down over its head because you slash in once into like its chest, as it's just kind of like in a revolting sense, spasming, and then you sweep down with the second one against the sack. You slash into it, mm -hmm. but it doesn't penetrate. Okay. So, like, it slashes into it, and it kind of thinly opens very quickly, like you're cutting through jello, and then it just <laughs> pulls itself back together. So, like, a small amount of uh, fluid kind of like leaks out in a grotesque looking pus. Mm -hmm. I need my magical items! <laughs> <laughs> mm hmm. And you said you cast Spare the Dying on the dwarf? Yeah. Okay. So Spare the Dying uh, would stabilize him. Yeah, I didn't know if he was dead or not. He's, no, he's okay. not on the brink of death. He okay. is unconscious. Okay, great. Okay. So as you're doing this and you slash and you swipe, when it reseals, that small pus begins to like drip down and fall onto the ground right at the side of this mountain dwarf. As it contacts the stone, you see it doesn't like sizzle or burn through like it's acidic. You see that it just kind of shakes and vibrates continuously right here and begins sliding over towards the unconscious dwarf. So Do it's I, only a I few feet this? away. Yes, you see this. It's sliding like almost up to the arm of the oh, dwarf. I'm going to try to pull him away. Okay, make a strength check. I'm going to burn it. <laughs> Okay. With sacred flame. Ah, woo! See you, bud! <laughs> See you later! Yeet! Yeet! That's a 20. Goodbye. That's a 20. What, Goodbye. You yeet him into the corner? <laughs> see you later. Get the okay. fuck away so from So you here. just, like, grab the two feet, and you see this gelatinous, ooze-like thing leaking over towards it. And you just drag him and slide him in one swift motion over towards the edge of the wall. So he's now about 15 feet. You said you want to cast sacred flame on the goo? Yeah. Okay. So, deck save for a mostly immobile goo. 15, it's going to fail. So, uh, 2d8 for you. <laughs> it doesn't just burn? <laughs> what do you mean, no? Oozes have stat blocks. <laughs> Great! Oh, it's only six! <laughs> Damage! <laughs> it's not, like, super effective or anything, because it's, like, under dark. No. Oh, God! Uh... Ah, <laughs> uh, you said six? Okay. Yep. Okay, so you form the blast down. It kind of illuminates it, and you heal. You hear a heal? quick... No, you hear <laughs> a quick, like, screech, like a high pitch. Yeah! Just emanate out from it, and it kind of, like, molds and unforms, and then <laughs> re-solidifies in a small portion on the ground. And it begins to, again, crawl in five-foot increments towards the dwarf. So you had tossed him into the corner, which is 10 feet away. It crawls five feet slowly over towards him and fully continues to shake and just... And then he begins to reach his one hand back over him. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Ah! No hand for you. Okay, so yeah, make your attack roll. Cutting your hand off. Uh, 10 plus uh, 8. Mm -hmm. Damage? Yeah. Yeah. No, it hits. Dude, they say it's only uh, 13. So, 7 uh -huh. for the first attack. Uh -huh. Does his hand come off? 
again. Oh no! Uh, what'd you say his AC was? Thirteen. Oh, this, so this is uh, twelve. Oh. Yep. So bonus, you slice. Bonus attack. You, yeah. So you slice, and we'll say that you cleave, like, along his forearm. So, like, from elbow to wrist, you just... Oh, my God. And form this, like, thin, narrow slice down to oh. his wrist, and blood just, like, splashes, and then you bring your other sickle up to yeah. attempt to slice the hand again. So it's 16. 16 hits. Ooh, so nine. Nine. So you bring the other sickle down, and since it's hooked, we'll say it hooks and attaches into his chest so you pin oh. his fucking own arm with uh. your sickle as you uh, and just dig it like a hook into his body and he's just flailing with his hand against the back of his shoulder desperately trying to reach towards his back can i take my other sickle and just off with his head i mean you had your two attacks three attacks correct okay. yeah so he now is going to oh, please don't Punch me into the wall. <laughs> uh, I have two legitimate options here, and this is what makes decisions difficult. <laughs> All right. Which one would the insane doctor do? <laughs> <laughs> so with his other hand, he just, like, grabs into his own stomach. And you see his fingers just begin to dig in oh, to his own stomach. What do you mean dig in? Like he's digging through his stomach out towards his what back. What the fuck? <laughs> and you see him just go through with his hand because it kind of illuminates like, oh, like fire. No. Uh. And he digs through his own stomach and you see it just melt as he rushes through, and you hear this great splat. <laughs> <laughs> well, it will feed. And he begins to fall over. And you see. Can the... I dig my <laughs> sickle out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so you dig your sickle out. He falls forward onto the ground, and this horrific puddle of blood begins just sliding out from the side. But you can see. His hand has burst up into the sack on his back. So the sack's open. It's melting, yes. You can see it oh. shriveling and withering away. Oh. And this squid-like thing inside of it is just shaking. Just shaking. <laughs> and you can see the ooze crawling toward the mountain dwarf. All of the ooze? Just one. The one ooze that was still over. And the, the thing is still shaking in the... Mm -hmm. Ah! Ah! I don't like this thing! Yeah, go ahead. Make your three attack rolls. What are I'm, you doing about gonna, the ooze? I'm going to cast Spirit Guardians. Okay. And a... I don't know what would appear around me. I don't know my history, so I... Uh, we'll say a small little band appears with a guitar player, <laughs> a vocalist, and a set of drums. <laughs> so first it's going to hit. I'll just do the three attack yep. rolls first. Is, is it... Is, is the Matthews Second Day band? Hit. This is the Matthews Day <laughs> band. Yes! <laughs> so 11, 15, and 13 base. So they'll all hit, right? Correct. Okay. And I'm designating myself, Bran, and this dwarf to not be affected by it. Okay. By it. So seven's the first. Okay. Eight's the second. Six is the last. Okay. What was the total? Eight, seven, six? Yeah. So, 14, 14. 21. Yep. And, uh, was it back to me, John? Yes. Because, I mean, he's lying on the ground, and you're slashing into it, and the squid is just kind of, like, rolling around inside. So, 18. For your attack roll? Sneak okay. attack. Oh, the sneak attack, yes. So, 39. Yep. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, you definitively finish what is left of Foley's existence, the, the doctor here. It's his real name. Um, so you just cleave in, and you're just slashing densely and swiftly into the sack that's on his back, and you're carving through it, and as you make through the, the outer thin lining of it, and you burst all this goo just splashes down onto the ground into the pile, the puddle of the doctor's blood. 
Oh, and this God. this squid-like thing that looks almost like it's a head. So it's got tendrils flailed out from the lower part of its mouth and a white, oh, like no. a wide, great oh, purple no. brain. Oh, no. Just right here just sucks down into the hole of the doctor's body. <laughs> What is this? I, I don't know. Finn, what am I looking at? <laughs> Finn? Um, do, I, do I know? Do you know? <laughs> Great. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm within 15 feet of the man. Correct? Uh, the, the mountain dwarf or this no, thing? No, this thing. And the slime. The other uh, piece yeah, of Yeah, so slime. the slime that's off to the side, you're within five feet of that. Okay. The thing itself, you're about 15 feet away from. Okay. I'm going to move so that way a, a, this thing, this uh, spiritual guardians works within a 15 foot radius Correct. of me. So I'd like s- to affect both of them. Okay. Uh, they have to make wisdom saving throws. Okay. For every turn that they're in range and when they move into it. So they're in it now. Okay. As of me casting the spell. So okay. They have so to does it them. say it's at the beginning of their turns? Turns. It says. Because uh, I believe any, it's at the beginning. Any affected creature speed is halved in the area, and when the creature enters the area for the first time on a turn or okay. starts its okay. turn there. All right. So we'll do their first set then. So we'll do the thing within the mile. Uh, oh boy. Uh, twenty-one with bonus. Yeah, I mean, my wisdom modifier is a plus four, so okay. I would so assume... Okay, so it'll take half damage. Okay, so that's uh, 3d8 radiant damage. Good. And then I'll roll for the ooze. The ooze is a flat 17, so yeah, okay. the ooze succeeds as well. So we'll half the damage for sure. both of them. Uh, 17, and then halved. Okay, so eight. So another eight to the ooze, and then eight to this thing. Okay. So. Uh, and their speeds are halved. Fantastic. So. Oh boy. Uh, well, the ooze then theoretically will crawl in. It'll take two actions for it to crawl five feet. Yeah. Okay. So it will take two more actions. So it's going to go half of the way approximately towards the mountain dwarf on the ground. Uh, this means that next turn it will reach the mountain dwarf on the ground. Uh, and now, as you have seen, the head of this thing kind of dissolve and almost disappear into the stomach that once existed for this doctor. Mm-hmm. You see the shoulders yep. kind sure. of begin That's to just of course. stretch and yep. and slide and shake. Wearing them like a skin suit. <sighs> Not my preferred He's a skin, skin man. And... <laughs> It just Great. begins to stand up, and you can see the head of the doctor is just tearing at the oh. neck lining oh. and just beginning to slide oh. off to the side. So you see the bones of, like, the spine just, like, begin to crack open, and it just the head falls off, and you see this horrific squid-like visage appear in front oh. of you. Great. And in your head, you just, both of you, hear a voice this is our domain I'm gonna respond mm-hmm. fuck the ocean and its creatures <laughs> uh, okay so Fucking you both squids. must make an intelligence saving oh, throw oh goody oh baby oh boy uh, so that's an 11 for me oh! so my, mod, my mod's plus 11, 11. I rolled an 11. My mod's nine. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, okay, so we'll do the psychic damage. Oh, wait, no, it's lower. It's a 10 because I don't have my items. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> oh, by the way, I, I do have that duck. Mm-hmm. Yes, you do. Gotta bring it. Oh, my God. What did you just roll? <laughs> 25, 28, uh, 31 psychic damage. Oh, my God! As both of you just feel this great wave just strike you in the face and this horrible just image of the hole, the excavation site, just fills your faces 
and it feels like you're looming over it, looking down into it. You have not physically moved, but you feel just that image in your eyes, uh, and you are both stunned for one minute. All right, so I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> Guess I'll see y'all later. <laughs> uh, oh, so that's it for this episode, guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's its turn, okay? So you guys are permitted to make the intelligence saving throw again at each of your turns to see if the stun concludes. What do I got to beat, man? <laughs> what do I got to beat? A uh, 15. Nope. 12 plus 9. Get me out. <laughs> it's okay. So at the end of your turn, you just kind of resolve and steal yourself once more and break out of this. You, uh, Finn, sadly do not. Mm -hmm. um, Spirit Guardians does not require concentration, so the spell effect will continue to run. No, it does. It does require concentration? Yep. So that uh, make a constitution or a concentration check. Uh, so the difficulty check is 16. 19. 19? Okay, yep. so the spell continues to run for you. Great. Uh, so I will make the <laughs> saving oh. throw for the ooze. The ooze fails. You may roll the damage for the ooze for the saving throw. Damage for the thing. Uh, it will succeed, so it will take half because it's a 17. All right. uh, so I'll at the end of your turn, you break out of the stun. Uh, 10. 13. 13. And then halved for okay. whoever failed. So six to this, and then 13. So yeah, you watch as the ooze just kind of is overcome by illumination and just disperses and becomes this horrifying puddle of liquid Great. like right at the arm of this mountain dwarf. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, so you break out at the conclusion of the spell. Oh, I'm dead. If that hits again, I'm gone. Uh, That'll be it. So it's going to just kind of slide over extraordinarily gracefully towards you and it's going to elevate its tentacles mm -hmm. and you see this I mean you're stunned so like you're not really seeing much other than like you see the hole so you watch more so Great. as this thing slides over towards Finn and its tentacles elevate and it just lands on his head so it is going to use its melee attack of <laughs> extract brain <laughs> oh my god uh, 19 with bonus. Uh-huh. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my, what is it? 19. Of what? Oh, that's the attack roll. Oh, I mean, yeah, my, my, uh, my AC is like a 12, or it's 16, I guess. It's, I have 16 right in here for some reason. What do you got 19? Was I, I'm a fucking Kathleen cleric. What do you mean? Uh, so, uh, somebody in chat, would you like to roll the... 10 D10 damage. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm leaving. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, Goodbye, everyone. Anyone who I'll would, see you next week with a new character. would like to make Whoa. the 10 D10 damage roll to see how our good friend. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Does it really? I'm, I had 57 total health. That was, oh. 50, that was 53. And I already took 31. <laughs> All right. Yeah, any any intelligent creature that took that amount of damage first hit would run away. So, yeah, oh it just... Jesus Christ. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, it it devours your brain. Great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, it's just on, and you, I guess you see Finn just like, uh, and you just watch as this thing pulsates. In the back of its head and the squid-like area begins to just grow and pulsate and illuminate with a thin light blue kind of light <laughs> out of it. Uh, and you just see Finn just like shrink and stop moving and his face just kind of thins out and withers and it, like the skin of his face just becomes loose and Finn just falls forward to his knees. Am I dead? I mean, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pack it up. <laughs> oh, so where's the squid? See Finn win. <laughs> Where's Jesus. the squid? Yeah. Wow. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's got its back to you, and it's sucking Finn's life out of him. Ah! <laughs> yup. Okay, so yeah, Woo! you leap onto the back God. of this thing. Woo. You can roll your attacks. 
I'm trying to think of... No, no, no. First, I'm going to use my action. Or wait, is it bonus action or action? Oh, God. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, Chad. It's not that I could do. Uh, I did as much as I could. Uh, no, I know. And this is this is the monster. This is its stat block. <laughs> this, is, this is rated as a hard encounter for you. Yeah, it's no, no no armor or anything. I mean, I I don't know if I do this or if I just try and leave because oh. it did thirty one to me. Mm -hmm. I don't. Mm, mm -hmm. I guess I'll use my action to cast Mirror Image. Okay. So, so I was going to say, how are you going to leave anyway? You're in a jail <laughs> cell with this thing. I mean, I touched the wall, didn't I? Yeah, that's coming in. <laughs> the what? wall? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> the doctor has a fun house. So I cast Mirror Image on myself. <laughs> I'm going to move towards it, and I'm uh -huh. going to use my bonus action to fucking slice it. Go ahead. Going for the back of the head. Can you give the description of Finwin again? Ash would like to draw uh, Finwin if you could. Uh, Finwin... Uh, was a short halfling man with I have gingerish, advantage, correct? Correct. Uh, orangish, uh, brilliant orange hair, freckles on his cheeks, uh, blue eyes, um, a very short, uh, kind of like stubbly, just like a, a pubescent level beard. He was frail, he was thin. So it was a 19 and, and then an 18, so the 19. Hits. Uh, and then 4 plus 4 is 8, and then... I'm behind it, so... Yeah, you sneak attack. Uh, should I, like, uh, leave? <laughs> should I, I, don't know. should I go? No, you're okay. 15? Am I? I don't 15. Think I am. 15 damage And I would like total. to... Yep, I'm definitely slicing at the glowing brain part. Okay. <laughs> Just, I'm, it's, it's taller now. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like, it's breaking up. What out. do you mean? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? Like it's growing. No! <laughs> it <ate> my brain! <laughs> That's how these monsters work. <laughs> uh, so you did 15 damage total? No, 15 plus. But you fucking chip me on that. <laughs> That's what I'm asking. 15 plus 8. So 23? Yeah. Okay, so 37's been dealt to it. <laughs> Is that your turn? I don't fucking know! <laughs> <laughs> Is that my turn? John us. You guys are going to have fun today. Ha 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 Fuck you. Mm -hmm. Is that my turn? My I don't know, John. Do I magically have my magic items on me now? No. Nope. I don't fucking know. All right. We'll see if it's psychic blast recharges. I'm about to call out to the dwarves for help. Help. <laughs> A one. It does not recharge. What happens if it recharges, John? I guess. Dead. It mind blasts you again. <laughs> if it can do it, it's gonna fucking do it. Uh. Well, I mean, I guess it'll attempt to extract your brain. No, it won't. <laughs> How's it gonna get close enough? Uh, no. I mean, you attacked it. Yeah, I stabbed it and shit. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> mean it can't move. You like sink your sides into its back, and it just like yeah. So it attempts to attack me. Okay. Yeah. So it turns around, and yep. it it's like, hey, which one's him? Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, I have to roll a d20, correct? And I it's 11 or above. I forget. I do not attack the correct target, as far as I remember. Uh, is if you, you, is I roll. You roll. You roll. I roll. Okay. So if I roll d20, and if it's six or higher, six then or I get higher, to, I get to choose since I have three duplicates. Okay. <laughs> Wait, you have the plus four. I gave you a plus four. Since when? With the fucking blessed shit or with guidance. What? You have a plus four. Guidance is a skill or ability check. Damn this it. is not that. Shit. Oh. Uh, all right, chat. Who wants to roll the 10d10? Wait, what? It doesn't, doesn't it have to get past my AC? Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I thought that it just automatically, when you fail the mirror 49 image... 49 if it hits. Uh, 15. No! No! Oh. It's a oh. six, 16, right? Oh. No, 17! Fuck off! My AC 17! Nope! Ah. <laughs> Permit me a counterattack. Do it. Do it. You don't get a counterattack. I mean, that's its turn. Wait! I'm trying to wait, 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 wait. Hear me out. We're not dead. This is, a, this is a ruse. It's an illusion. It's a mind beast. It's an illusion. I'm not dead! It's fake! It's a lie! <laughs> We're stuck in a mind trap! The doctor has the fun. My turn! 
Yeah, it's your turn. Woo! We never <laughs> even left. We're by the fucking stairs, Paul. We're still in our cells. We never even left. <laughs> Nine plus eight. Seventeen. Yeah, seventeen hits. All right. Second attack. Fifteen plus eight. Hits. Uh, extra attack. Sixteen. Hits. Uh. Three. So seven. <laughs> Fourteen. Uh. Twenty-four. Twenty-four damage. Yep. Oh, it's close. How would you have sneak attack? I don't know. You don't. <laughs> Is my body there? <laughs> is, is there an unconscious uh, dwarf nearby? Uh, <laughs> There's an unconscious dwarf nearby. <laughs> pretty big reach fall. <laughs> Time to roll to see whether or not no! the mind no, no, players no, 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 mind no, blast no, 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 no. A three. You're safe. Oh. It does not recharge. Uh, okay, so... Um, well, it's going to extract your brain. So roll for mirror image. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yes, you watch as it just like in a, a like not even a real confusion, like it just and just consumes one of your mirror images. Great. Mm -hmm. I still have to roll against the state say. Uh, thirteen. Does I don't remember how mirror images armor class works. I think it has an armor class. I think it just dissipates. Does it? Once something makes contact with it? I, I wasn't sure whether or not it had like a reduction in AC based on the oh, number. Oh, it has no, it has a 10 plus my dex mods. So yes. 14. So yeah, it doesn't e <laughs> it doesn't even it doesn't even <laughs> suck onto your mirror image. <laughs> Welcome to my fun house! Yes. <laughs> Fuck right. you! Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, so that's hit. 15 plus 8. Mm -hmm. 16 plus 8. Nat mm -hmm. 20! 11 plus 8. Yeah, so they hit. Can I I guess I can't. No, I wait. Since it attacked one of my clones, can I position myself and the three other clones behind it? Three other. Two other. Two oh. other clones. Yeah. You want to position all of you behind it? Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Can we'll you sneak it. attack because of your clones? No, I can sneak attack because I'm behind it. Behind it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't realize. Um, like in terms of the definitive movements of multiple objects at one time, uh, it can't discern which one of you is real. So five. Because I rolled a three on its perception. So that's twelve, and then. Was that so? Twenty-one and then snack attack. A lot. Twenty-one plus. Oh boy. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Thirty-nine. Yeah. Okay. So you slash into this thing as you position behind it, and you slash like once more into its back where you had previously struck. And as you slash into it, you watch as this thin purple goo just begins, like, pouring out of it. And you watch as the area where the brain was begin to, like, shrink and shrivel and retract into the, the more localized part of its head. And it falls to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and you smush it. <laughs> you smush it. Can you hand me a tissue? Yeah. So, yeah, you smush. And then I repeatedly... Burn it with sacred flame, yes. like so all of it. Every like, I don't want a piece of this squid left. I, I roast it, just <laughs> pillars. You ain't calamari. <laughs> oh, oh, I do. Breaded. <laughs> <laughs> and then I burn the doctor's body too. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good choice. <laughs> okay, so you burn all that's here over and over again with sacred flame. Uh, as this is happening, you see the mountain dwarf begin to stir. Uh, as I see that, when I look at Finwin, what is it, does he look like he doesn't have a brain? He looks 100% <laughs> like he doesn't have a brain. Like, uh, just dead on the ground. <laughs> I burn his body too. <laughs> burn, burn. No, no, no. Like, oh, uh, yeah, so just going, over and burn, over again. Baby, burn. <laughs> It's just me in this cell, mm -hmm. nobody else. So yep. the mountain dwarf is stirring. Yep. Oh. I'm gonna look at the mountain dwarf. Yeah. And you see with it's, my peepers. You see it's your good friend Grimdar. I'm gonna slap is him it? in the face. I don't think it is. I'm gonna I slap him. Do you in slap the... it in the face? Yep. You feel a slap in your face. Grimdar. Yes. <laughs> oh, give me the fucking hat! Give me the hat! Give me the bandana! <laughs> give it. It's over there. It's by the hat. Oh. Oh. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm going to extend my hand out and say, wake the fuck up, samurai. <laughs> We've got a fortress to burn. 
Brad. <laughs> Get up. Uh, <laughs> we gotta go. <laughs> oh, fuck this character sheet. <laughs> Get out of here, Finwin. Uh, as you <sighs> grab Grimdar's hand, you feel a chill That's not good. against your fingers uh, coming from his body. Like he feels cold to the touch. Great. Uh, roll for investigation, please. <laughs> Nat 20! <laughs> what so, do I know? <laughs> as you look closely <sighs> against Grimdar, you can see uh, that in a small area, like at the base of his neck, you can see that there's a small, like, slice, like, near his collarbone. Huh. And it looks like it's been freshly bandaged. I'm... What, do I do I know where we where the fuck we are? No. Okay. You died, <laughs> and, and you've been unconscious. Okay. Yes. Since. Where 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 are we, Bran? We're in the fortress. D Danes. Uh, Olive, N N Nina. I I haven't seen Nina. Olive is uh, a little different, caged up. Didn't seem herself. Oh, like Don't. angry? We're no, not like, not angry. Like empty. No, that seems about normal. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. That seems about right. Oh, I fucking no, know. I mean empty like a husk. Oh, that's that's uh, not good. No, it's not. Anyway, you're you're pretty cold. Do you feel cold? I feel cold. Yeah. I feel like a blizzard. <laughs> I'm just, my skin. My skin. I'm just my gonna skin. point. I'm gonna point at the the slice. Mm -hmm. Do you do you know what that is? Feel it. Yeah. You, I know what it is. you feel like you have like an incision scar, like right here. Oh, good. Near your collarbone. <laughs> Surgery, lovely. Uh huh. Uh huh. Great. Uh -huh. Wasn't the doctor's first visit? <laughs> <laughs> Clearly not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh. Do I have any idea what it is? No. <clears throat> You've been unconscious for approximately two days. Great. I, I, I don't know what it is. Lovely. We 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 gotta go now. And okay. I'm going to go back over to the wall mm -hmm. and put my... Begin grabbing at yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you feel in the area in which you return, but it feels solid. Grimdar? What? Grimdar, I think we're trapped. Uh-oh. Grim Grimdar, make an intelligence saving throw. <laughs> Good luck. Smart man. 16? 16? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Delicious. Oh, it's going to matter. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, you see you're in the jail cell. You see a dead, charred halfling body, <laughs> a, a dead, mostly goopy uh, kind of squid-like thing where there's purple ooze just kind of, you know, sat here on the ground, just kind of collecting in a pool. And you see a dead doctor. How, how am I alive? I, I have no idea. Did you submit? No, I spit in his face. <laughs> Scrimdor. And then he, he smashed me with he his rock. Smashed you <laughs> with his big rock. Like he came in the cell and took off his little kilt. <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. He's a weird dude. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna look. I guess I'll check the the pockets and things of, of Finwin's body to see if there's anything any tools he has. You burned him. <laughs> There's not really tools that are going to be left, no. I mean, you can see kind of like charred goggles, yes. Yeah, I'll take the charred goggles. I'm going to wear them in his memory. Yeah, like I said, they can cast light <laughs> illuminating out from the yep. location. So they're they're not on right now? No, they're not on. All right, well, I'm going to wear them. Okay. So, yeah, you put on good friend Finwin's goggles. Do you find the mithril? Because that yeah, definitely boots. not have burned. Yeah, yeah, the shoes have burned, but you can see that the mithril is kind of like loose So the there. soles. Correct. I'll take the mithril. Okay. So you take the two strands of mithril. Um, and I'll check the doctor's body. Okay. Yeah. The doctor does not really have anything on him. I'm going to take his nice feet leather shoes. <laughs> so, feet leather so you take shoes. his, his well-fitted <laughs> shoes yes. of leather. And Grimdar, do, do you know how to get out of here? No. No? How did you get in? We touched the wall and me and Finwin came in. Slap. Yeah, I mean, you again also feel contact with the wall, but nothing happens. Oh, it's 
It's a rock. Yeah, we, we, we touched it and came in. I don't have my bink bonks. So <laughs> I, I can't... Guess we'll just wait for Dane to come and fuck us See, then. There's no guess. door. There's a door. Where? There's no handle. Correct. There's, there's no... I'm the fucking handle. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the door? <laughs> take, me to the, take me to the fucking door. All right, take I, me to this door. I, I, I walk him over to the door. I'm like, here we go. Yeah, Come you on, help. You're, I mean, you're slow and oh, hobbled. Yeah. Like, you're <laughs> yeah, mostly yeah. crippled. You actually yeah. are suffering from several effects of exhaustion. Of course. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You've made this impossible for me, John. It's great. <laughs> uh -huh. So you kind of weakly carry your good friend Grimdor over to the door, and you can see that it's an enormous obsidian frame. But as I said, it does not look like there are actual frame portions of it. It looks like it just blends seamlessly into the rocks of the wall. Uh, but you can see that on the inside here, you can see that there's a small kind of um, indented outward towards you area in the bottom middle of it. I'm going to touch it. Okay. So you place your hand on it. Okay. Roll a d20. Uh, 11. 11. Yeah. So <laughs> as you place your hand on the door, you just kind of feel this weird heat in your hand. And your hand begins to illuminate. Brent, what's happening? Wait a second. I know. Do I do I remember about his lineage? I Correct. do. Yes. I mean, oh. I know too. Oh right. I think I think you know what's happening. Dane can do it too. All right. Put my other hand on top of that hand. Mm -hmm. and just push. So you push. Yep. The door does not move. Push. <laughs> <laughs> so then you. It's a sliding door. <laughs> yes, you slide it into the wall. Oh, and great. Okay, great. <laughs> yes. Well, lovely. So it slides and it disappears into the wall, and you are back right at the guardhouse. <laughs> oh, great. Is there a guard? No. <laughs> this yeah, is I mean, the he would have come in. Well, this is the one that you had found the sleeping yeah, man yeah, at yeah. previously, but there hey, is look, no one gear. in this guardhouse. Oh, get gear. <laughs> oh, what, are we, what is there? <laughs> uh, roll for investigation. Oh. Do I see anything new? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so 18 plus uh, 11. 11. No, you don't see anything yeah, new. 18. Uh, so you see a uh, set of chainmail armor. You see a large war hammer. Mm -hmm. And you see, so like the chainmail mm -hmm. includes the breasts, the yeah. leggings, the like chases, the gloves, sure. everything. Great. So you can equip yourself with a set of chainmail. Just Bloop. slink everything Shh. on. Donning armor does take a few minutes. That's Do fine. Donning armor. <laughs> And you put a little uh, kind of like statue-like <coughs> helm on your head where it's got the little visor coming down over your nose. And you're just... Amazing. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Feels good to be back. What's up? I'm Grimdar now. Right? <laughs> now I don't have to be that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and what else? Warhammer? A Warhammer. Uh, and you see that there's also like a, a kind of like a chain. Or not a chain. Uh, you can see that there's kind of like a steel shield here. Like a kite shield. That's not Grimdar style. So I don't need that. So <laughs> again, that. when I checked the doctor's body, there was no, I don't know, reusable coin. Mm -mm. Great. <laughs> it, it, is it a one-handed Warhammer? Do I get extra damage for it being two-handed? You can use any Warhammer, one-handed or two-handed. Okay. Handed. Yeah. So is it extra damage if I use a two-handed? Correct. It is yeah. versatile. So 1d8 for one-handed, 1d10 for two-handed. Yeah, Grimdar's not taking the shield. Yep. He so wouldn't. you pick so up a I Warhammer. Not, I will not take You're the shield. You're just kind of like... Elevated off off the wall and just kind of like, Burr. yeah, feels a little heavy in your hands right now. Yep. Yep. Uh, what's my AC? Uh, sixteen. It was normally sixteen. How was it normally sixteen? Originally, according to my sheet, I think I probably had chainmail on. So yes. That yeah, sense. that's what you start the game with. That's sure. why I'm going with that. Sure. Oh, you had but mail. I do have a cross that and have seventeen written. Yeah, you had splint mail. Because that was better ah, armor that you got right, later in okay. the game. That was the splint mail that gave you the uh, advantage on saving throws. That was the splint mail of light. Mm -hmm. So chain mail is just a base of 16. Got it. You have your armor with an AC 70. Okay. Got yep. it. Cool. So. Great. You <laughs> are standing here in the guardhouse together. Uh, you can see that there's the door to the right that would lead you back to the workshop. And then there is the door to the left that would lead you back to the jail cells for where you saw the previous insane 
Dero, uh, Grey Dwarf Man. So since it's only been like, how, how long has it been since we walked through? Since you've been doing all this, maybe about 30 minutes. Okay, so I would remember which way back. Because Correct. Yeah. I don't remember. Correct. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to do that to you. <laughs> like, this is a big ass Unless you're going to hand me the map. No. <laughs> D- didn't think there's, so. There's, there's things on here you yeah. can't see. <laughs> Secret doors, traps. Secret beautiful. doors! <laughs> I'm going to touch all the walls! <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. Grimdark, touch every surface. Touch the sludgy ooh, walls, ooh, please. Ooh, 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 ooh. Find the secrets. <laughs> ooh, sludgy walls. Power? Yay! Mm. <laughs> drink me. Uh, mm, mm, mm. The walls begin yelling out, drink me. <laughs> I put on the goggles and I chug it. Oh. <laughs> uh, all right, so I will, we'll head back to the, the stairway up. Stairway to heaven. Okay, so that go. means you're going to walk through the workshop. I don't know. It's I? either the workshop or back towards the jail cells. Which where the way is easier? I don't. I told you. I remember the way. Which which way has less danger? I mean, you killed the hook horror in the workshop, but you did see Olive's body in there, freaking the fuck out. Yeah, we should probably. Yeah, I'll give Gr- Grimdar the tour. <laughs> Go to the workshop. You seem even more piney than before. How do we get out of here, Bren? Uh, follow me. Okay, I'll give you the tour. <laughs> Tour? Yeah, the tour. It's, it's a lovely place. Okay. No, it's horrible, Grimdar. Let's go. Come on. Oh. Gotta get the fuck out of here. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we head back oh. into the workshop. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's permitted. I don't hear anything in there. No, you don't. I mean, the hook car is dead on the ground, so you still see its dead body right there, and you uh, see the the silhouette of your friend Olive sat in the center of the room inside of that cage. So you can see that it looks as though she is sitting down. But she's not gesturing towards you. She's not recognizing your approach or anything like that. She has just sat motionless, silently. Olive? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I love having Grimdar back. (laughs) No, Grimdar, no. No. It's... No, it's not. But... It's... (laughs) <laughs> okay. No. Hey, Grimdar. You're not Olive. What? What do you mean? Of course I am. No, we gotta go. <laughs> Fuck this. Yeah. It's so good to see you. To smell you. Nope. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. She's like. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Grimdar, Grimdar, she's like her brother now, but worse. Yeah, even I know I don't smell good. Let's go. <laughs> I, I've been dead for two days. No we one can lie about how Grimdar smells. We're gonna get the fuck out of here. We're gonna go. Uh, as you're running by, roll for perception. No, I, didn't, I didn't say bye. <laughs> didn't say bye. Specification. Well, you have to run by her sure. to get to the door. No, that's a really big room. We don't need to really I mean, get yeah, close I'm to the cage. I'm not cage. saying bye is in five feet. I am not getting feet. close to the cage, yeah, John. You can be not 15 getting close feet. to the petrified treasure either. <laughs> uh, Sixteen. 16? Okay. Yeah. What did you roll? <laughs> fucking 27. 27? What oh, is fucking it? fucking sweet. All right. So as you're running by, as you take a few steps, uh, you catch out of the corner of your eye on the right side here what looks like a thin frame in the wall. What does that mean? Thin door. frame. Door. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> so you're running by just, we got to go. Boop. <laughs> Do I see it? Uh, No. Okay. Because it's a, a DC 20 for okay. perception. Boop. So, yeah, you see it. So, you go over and you feel it. And as you're pressing against it, you can feel that a few of the stones begin to, like, move. Like, you can. Oh, no. I'm going to draw a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Opens right up, baby. <laughs> it does not open up. Oh. Uh, so, you can see that it's um, four by three. <laughs> Have fun with this one. <laughs> so four by three? Correct. Oh, jeez. So four spaces. So yeah, you're going to have to. You want to draw it for you? Yeah, please. Okay. My brain. <laughs> Grimdar brain Grimdar. is back. I can't think. <laughs> Grimdar brain is back. It never left. Also, Chad, I'll be giving away uh, Finwin's character sheet next month for the top uh, person. And all of the all these papers that I printed. Because he's dead. <laughs> Already. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't make it out with this. I'm like genuinely I'm shocked. shocked. I'm fucking <laughs> shocked. Like 31 damage, sucks his brain out. <laughs> Turn two. Brand, you're alone. Yeah, it's great. So uh, turn it sideways. Well, it's the four is along the bottom, so it's three high 
four okay, across. Sure. I'm are, sorry. Are what? There, is there okay. anything? Where are the bricks? Those are the bricks. So in the wall, you feel this frame outlined in the wall. Okay. And so I can move it? Those bricks, yes, can be moved and interchanged because as you're they, feeling they against look it, different? one of them, I mean, you can roll for investigation. Yeah, I'm also. One I mean, of you them. Didn't tell me yet, so. As you move it, you can feel that it instantly goes into what feels like an empty space. So that top left one was previously empty. This one. Correct. Okay. So if you want to number them, like one, two, three, and then go down to the next line. Eight. Yep. Eight. Eight. So I mean, yeah, as you're running your fingers over them, you can feel that the material of the rocks feels some of them are more smooth, and some of them are a little bit more like crude. Like poorly formed. You'll never get into the doctor's room. I don't know if I want to go in there, honestly. Yeah, honestly. You don't know shit. You didn't even tell me that the thing's there. What thing? This. Oh, yeah. Grab the thing. <laughs> are you, are you, so, I mean, like, you go to leave the room, I'm assuming, and you just. I'm yeah, not I'm just, there. I'm just standing looking at the door. I turn around. Brad, what are you, what are you doing? Grimdar, over here. But the doors. This, this, there's, there might be something over here. Okay, I run just over. Just gonna. B -b 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 -b. Mm -hmm. I'm randomly doing. Wait, no, I probably shouldn't. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't fucking do uh, that. Lock away the doctor's room forever. <laughs> so, so you said what, where? What? I don't even know what I moved. Give me this. So, <laughs> as you were touching it, you weren't moving it at first. Okay. Okay. So when you felt it and you could feel the frame, your hand in the top left could feel that there's kind of like an empty space. So that one currently is empty. Okay. Mm -hmm. And is that the only one that's empty? Correct. It's a fucking sliding puzzle. I hate it. <laughs> like, like, so like much. Pe people would play with these and I'd be like, no, I like hate never. Them. I would More never than, touch them. Oh, I hate them so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm need, gonna look at the wall. I need potions. Feel it. <laughs> mm, Grimdar stuff. I'm gonna use my rock sucking. <laughs> figure out what's up with this wall. Uh, Sixteen plus rock suck. I mean, yeah, you can tell that this is a moving puzzle, and that. There's one empty space that has mm -hmm. been provided for you to be capable of moving mm -hmm. some of the objects to be able to get that empty space to a specific location within this frame. So, and, and there's, how do the rocks feel? Uh, again, so, some of them feel like they are crude. Some of them feel like they are polished. Is there specifics? Yes. Okay. Okay. So as you feel them, and you're running your hands over them, you can feel that uh, two, six, eight, seven, eleven, and ten feel smooth to the touch. The other ones are crude. Well, tic tac toe, gotcha. Who knows? <laughs> Let's play in the fun house. <laughs> I don't wanna. I don't wanna. So we've got one, two, three, four crude, and one, or five crude, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Smooth. And one empty space. And one empty space. Bran, roll for history. History? Uh huh. <laughs> It's 23. 23. Okay. So you can recall in your time here, only a few people have ever said something that involved numbers. One in particular, the crazy dwarf, told you a number. I don't know which one. He said 10 years. That's what he said. Great. Grimdar knows that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know that. <laughs> I texted it in our group text, so technically, technically, Brand knows. <laughs> technically, he knows. Mm -hmm. That was good, Grimdar Brain, though. Hey, who else? Anyone else? Turn. I, I genuinely utilizing don't numbers. No. 
Finwin didn't really discuss much about numbers because he continuously said, I don't remember how long I've been down here. I don't know how old I am. Didn't know. Dudrick and Dane have not really been using numbers. Dr. Vito did not really use much with numbers. So in terms of a number that's been used that had some sense of meaning, a man who said down here that he hates Dane said that he's been down here 10 years. I mean, I mean do we have to get if we arbitrarily the number the spaces and then go 10 to the empty, I, I don't know what else to do. I mean, other than arranging them in some we sort of... We just numbered this 10 and we've solved the puzzle. <laughs> this is 10. We, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> get meted. No. <laughs> so we go... 10 to that spot, but that shifts everything. This is a lot of writing, so there you go. <laughs> but technically, the empty space is n nothing. So you could just shift this up and then shift this up and shift that over. What do you and mean? Now the no, 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 because that'll be... Cause this we, is empty. You shift, so this, you shift up. this up. Now this is empty. And then you, you shift, shift that this up, up and yeah. this is empty. And then you shift this How? over and now this is empty. Well, is though, that what you do? I don't know. Won't this, will this fall? You hold it up. Is that what you do? Sure. I mean, yeah, it's a genuinely pretty straightforward puzzle. Yes, you rearrange the rocks to where the open, empty space is capable of entering the spot with 10, and you hold the rock above it. Yeah. And then you feel, as you're holding against this rock, this rock begins to Pushes. push inward, yeah. okay. and the door begins to slide open. Hey, mm. now what's in the room for Bran? More of those things, and we're dead. <laughs> Psychic <laughs> blast to strike you in the face. Great. No, How much health do you have, Grimdar? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Uh, so, How yeah. much health does Grimdar have? <laughs> <laughs> You've completed long rests. You've been sleeping. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> 89. Yeah, you're at full hit points. Hey. <laughs> okay. I just picked my helmet up. We going in? Yes. I mean, yes, yeah, you in. can see that it's kind of a, a narrowish hallway, but you can Is see... Is it dark? Yes. Beep. <laughs> yes. So you create light. <laughs> And as you create light, you can see that it is a room that looks like it's made entirely of obsidian. Oh. Mm -hmm. So it's still dark, despite the light. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it almost feels more like it's reflecting back into you very brightly. Because it's smooth. It's like glass. Like, this is the cleanest obsidian that you guys... it was black. It is, but like the shine. The shine? It's, yes. got, it's like very well polished. Yes. It's, it's This is the nicest obsidian you've seen. And okay. this is a fucking hallway of it. Mm-hmm. It's a short hallway. It looks like it's only about 15 feet, and it bends to the right. Mm -hmm. Yes, to the right. I'll, I'll go first. Are you sure? I guess, Well, actually, it doesn't matter, because you're in front of me. I yeah. can still look over you. All right, yeah. So yep. you two begin walking through this well-polished hallway of obsidian. Uh, the floor beneath you is a, a smooth kind of uh, like a granite or a similar stone. Uh, but as you begin to bend to the right you feel this wave of pulsating magic like washing over you. Like you don't even need to make an arcana check okay. or a detect we magic just feel check. It. You just feel incredible magic pulsating out from the area ahead of you. Uh, you don't hear noises. You don't hear anyone. This doesn't... We're going to keep going. We solved the puzzle. <laughs> I don't... Grimnar, just stay calm. You hear what sounds like a glass vibrating. So you hear like a tink, 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 tink. I feel magic. Yeah, I'm going to keep walking. <laughs> okay. So yeah. And I kind of yeah, like I'm poke Grimdar in the back. Like, yeah. <laughs> Come on. You I kind keep of walking. slowly round the corner and you look in and you can see that this room is illuminated in a brilliant pale blue. So again, it's a small rectangular room about 10 feet long, about five to eight-ish feet wide. It's all illuminated in pale blue light, and you can see that there's a large, long desk of old, antique, like, oak wood. And on the desk, you can see that there are many vials, like, large vials, larger than these, okay. uh, getting a little bit more towards there's so many behind you. These. <laughs> okay. You can see in these the same viscous liquid uh, that was in the sack on the back uh, of the other man. Well. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> And you can see inside all of them are small squid-like creatures 
violently shaking, and other smaller vials around them, closer to approximately this size, you can see that many of them are between about a third and a half filled with blood. But no squids in them? No squids in them. Can I do a blood check? Is it my <laughs> fucking blood, John? Is it my blood? How are you going to do a blood check? I don't check? know. Look at it. I've seen my blood. <laughs> Nobody makes me Does bleed say, my own blood. Is there a fucking pirate hat in it? <laughs> in it? Is there, there, yeah. a little, is there a little grimdar does it in there? Say, does it say dumb mountain grimdar's blood? <laughs> yeah. dumb, I mean, dumb, you, dumb idiot blood? You can go over <laughs> and inspect things. Grim, grimdar, don't touch anything. Don't touch look, any of that. I'm just going to look at it. Grimdar? Grimdar? Do you see the shaking ones? Yeah, giant squid monsters that attack your mind come out of those. Oh, don't touch. I think I'd probably be fine. <laughs> but I won't because I've sustained a lot of damage, Grimdar. <laughs> okay. I'm going to look at the blood. Sure, roll for investigation. <laughs> 17 plus nothing. Looks like blood. <laughs> okay. I, I don't genuinely know how to give you a descriptive yeah, quality yeah. that no, would honestly know. signify it to you as your blood. Yeah. Uh, you can see that it says on it, uh, kind of like on the top, uh, like etched into mm -hmm. the uh, cork of it, you can see that there is a large G and then I. Yep. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Grimdar, ignorant beard. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible brother. I think this is mine. Don't touch it. Don't I need to put it back? <laughs> I don't. I don't know, Grimdar. Because so you're pretty. You're pretty cold. You feel different. Yeah. You feel a chill in the area where your scar, the incision, is on <laughs> your neck. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Open me up! Oh, oh. Grimdar's back alley doctor. <laughs> I'm the doctor now. Oh. <laughs> Hook me up. I mean, I don't think. Yeah, let's. You know what? It's near the vibrating squid monster. Surely your blood isn't contaminated. Let's put it back in. That's a great idea. And I begin to open one of the vials. Grimdar, this is the best idea no, you've no, had. No. And I take out a dagger. You want me to just dump it in? Probably not. What else is in the room? <laughs> uh, you can see that there are uh, two to three chests on the side. What? Uh, <laughs> I would have. What? I would have. Fuck whatever he's doing. <laughs> I got a chest. Yeah. I got a chest. <laughs> That's the best yeah, thing. We'll both. We'll both crack open one of the chests. Okay. Da, so da, I mean, yeah. Da, there's da, da, there's two on the right side and there's one on the left side. I go to the side with two. Grimdar, Clearly, you get the I'll right to, side. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> naturally. Uh huh. Okay. So as you step over towards the chest. Uh, you're opening chest one or chest two? I can't eject him first. <laughs> okay. You're going to open yours and it's clothes and mine is gold and riches because you're greedy. <laughs> oh, Thief. No. no. It's a, it's a, it's a ten. Ten? Yeah, you don't really do And by chest, any. are they wooden chests? Are they yeah. human chests? No, they're wooden right. chests. Okay. Uh, Just human chests. Yeah, I had to check because, I mean, we're in a blood monster room. We, 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 haven't, had we haven't encountered mimics, right? Have we? <laughs> we have now. <laughs> have we? I, I, I genuinely don't remember. No, you're not in this game. God damn. You've never encountered mimics. Sure. So, I mean, you lay your hands on it, and you yep. perform an arcana check, and you don't really detect anything magical, Boop. and you just open. Yep. So, as you kind of embed your fingers under the lid of the chest, I begin to pull it up, make a dexterity save. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, dex saving throw? Mm -hmm. All right, so it's gonna, it's gonna be 22. 22, okay, so you what? succeed, you take half. Take half! Yeah, that's how dex saves work. It's an arrow's gonna shoot out and hit you in the face. Uh, 11 damage, so half is five. Uh, half it again. Okay, so two. Yeah, okay. Owie! So as you enter into the chest with your fingers, they kind of like clamp down and you feel these sharp teeth-like <laughs> objects <laughs> embedding into your finger. Grimdar! <laughs> what? Don't touch it! Okay. I'm getting cut! <laughs> I grabbed the Warhammer. Uh-huh. It says it, he's, you're getting cut. Get help! <laughs> okay. Boom! 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 <laughs> I hit the fucking chest with the Warhammer. I mean, I can move it. my fingers, right? I mean, you can attempt to rip them out. What? What? They're stuck? Yeah. I thought I would have just gotten cut if I passed. I mean, yeah, you're like... I not, passed it. You're not, like, trapped I'm just in gonna there. Whip, 
Okay. So, so yeah, yeah without like slicing my Correct. fingers open. Yes, you just <laughs> kind of pull your fingers out yeah, and you attack. Two-handed, just. <laughs> okay. Gotta bring it back. Right <laughs> Gotta hit stuff. Four. <laughs> <laughs> so nine plus three. Very weak. <laughs> Great. Well, yeah, actually, Great. you do have exhaustion penalties. Yeah. You have disadvantage on the attack roll anyway. Okay. I have no health. Grimdark, nah, can I trick seven, some 17, damn. Yeah. So, yeah, you just kind of, like, smash, and a few fragments of it splinter, but you're very slow in bringing your yeah. hammer down, and you just kind of feel this wave of exhaustion hit you. Just, oh, oh I don't feel right. I, I can't smash, Bran. Great. Does it move? No, you hear a voice echoing out from the chest. You can't have my things. God damn it. What? You can't have my things. But you're dead. <sighs> Make, is the chest made of wood? Make abstraction check. Tell him he's dead. <laughs> is the We've done it before. Is, is <laughs> Tell him he's dead. You're dead. <laughs> Roll for persuasion. Are you fucking serious? Tell him he's dead. <laughs> 19 <laughs> plus <laughs> persuasion. Where the fuck is it? So it's a 20 with bonus. Mm. Yeah, so. <laughs> Dead does not matter. Is the chest wooden? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to take a couple steps back. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to panic sacred flame it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I mean, it, it can't really move, so it fails the deck safe. All the stuff inside is gone. <laughs> no, <laughs> please. <laughs> no, John. All your magic items. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, no. <laughs> no, they're magic items. They don't just burn away. That's not how that works. What do you the mean? The chest would burn first. He can Correct. put it out. I know. <laughs> Six and seven. So 13. 13 damage. Okay. So yeah. I mean, you begin to ignite the chest with the sacred flame so you can see scorch marks kind of appearing around the outsides mm -hmm. of it on the height of it and it's violently shaking mm -hmm. and you feel that the other chests in the room also begin to shake and quake mm, you can't have my stuff need key oh i pull out one of my keys the, the little key does it is there a spot for it yeah Weep. You insert the key. You, I wouldn't have noticed that with I my. Mean, you would have noticed the key. You just <laughs> said you lift the lid. Yeah, yeah. I said I, uh, you, I the key. <laughs> Fuck you. It's a chest like any other chest. It's gonna have a lock on it. You were just like, I rip it open. <laughs> okay. Arcana check, then I would have seen it. Yeah. Arcana Great. check is, isn't seeing a lock. It's determining if there's magic. <laughs> 18 passive perception. Yes, I would have seen it. Yes, I'm right. not saying you didn't. And then you did nothing. Well, you <laughs> chose. Your greedy bones tried to rip that shit <laughs> open. <laughs> Fuck you both. I used the key. Okay, so yeah, you insert oh, the key. Oh, it's mine, Grimdar. You're useless and slow. So you insert the key, and the key just sucks into the chest. Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> just start hitting it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, roll your attack rolls. <laughs> does, does it, like, come loose at all? Or? No, it just eats the key. Wrong key. It ate the key? Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck this. Four plus eight. Yeah, I mean, you smash into it, more wood fragments just begin to, like, splinter off. I'm going to look for a key in the room. Yeah, I mean, you look around. You can see that there's vials. You can see that inside one of the vials, inside one of the large ones that's got a kind of embryonic juice, you can see dangling down, kind of, like, almost floating. So it doesn't look like there's a string or anything, but mm -hmm. it's dangling in the center. It's mm -hmm. a small iron key. And uh, is there a little squid man in there? No. You see no squid man. You don't see. <laughs> I'm going to pick see. it up. You see no squid man. I'm going to pick it up. Mm -hmm. Shake it. Yeah. And I'm going to hold it. It just kind of like slurries around. Like mm. gulp, I'm going to hold it. Gulp, and yeah. I'm going to look for another key. <laughs> <laughs> anywhere else? <laughs> yep. Yeah, Literally anywhere else. Nope. On the floor, underneath the table. Maybe it's taped. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet. <laughs> oh, sweet. Oh, there's also a gun here. What <laughs> convenient. <laughs> 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 Fuck you, chest. <laughs> uh, no. You waste the little bullets on the chest. Don't have any for Dane. Yep. <laughs> Great. I'm going to... Boop. So you uncork it. Yep. And, you, and you hear just like... <sighs> oh, no. Like a breath emanating out from this. Oh, we unbench the Kench. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh, actually, sorry. It's, it is this bottle. Because it's a thick bottle. So, oh, give me the damn cork. I know. <laughs> you going to drink it? So, but just... 
Uh huh. So yeah, you. <sighs> Does it like suck back in? No. Do you cork it back up? Yeah. Well, yeah, I cork it back up. Uh huh. <sighs> Grimdar, and is it still like floating in there? Mm -hmm. The key. You wanna yeah. you wanna reach in and get this? With your it's very narrow. Big... Like you can't reach into it. My hands are too big for that. <laughs> you could throw it. It feels very cold. <laughs> like a blizzard. <laughs> like a blizzard. Oh, you, could, okay. you could break it. Just a, just a glass. I don't. It just, feels. It feels weird. Just hit it. It feels ground. weird. Uh, how about you do it? Okay. <laughs> I hand it to him. <laughs> bonk, bonk, bonk. <laughs> it does not shatter. <laughs> As you turn it, it does not move. It feels solid, despite when you look at it. It's a liquid. When you turn it upright, it's a solid, and you can see a kind of vacuum seals itself at the lid. <laughs> uh huh. I look in it. Yeah, you can yeah. see the key. You can see the goop. I take the thing over to the chest and I just put, <laughs> I put the vial. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you poke it in, and it just kind of slightly like the tip inserts, <laughs> and nothing opens. We have the key. Mm, doesn't feel like a key. It's in a, it's in a bottle. Mm, not key. Doctor puts in the key. How do we get it out of the bottle? Mm, doctor does not tell. Hey, uh, oh. <laughs> uh, why don't you why don't you heat it up? Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, you begin channeling fire into your melt, hands. I'm gonna melt it. So I mean, yeah, you're you're. It's not melting. The glass is not melting, and the liquid inside is still a liquid. Great. So nothing's really happening. Like you're heating it. You can feel heat leaving your hands, entering the glass, but it's not okay. becoming like a thinner liquid. What wait, if I wait. just jack it off? <laughs> yeah. Onto the... It didn't oh. work. It didn't work like this because it became a solid. So I'm whoa, gonna whoa, whoa, just whoa, whoa. <laughs> keep, keep heating it. Let me feel it. When I touch the glass, is it still cold? Yes. So you just jack the bottle off? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. It slushes back and forth, but it does not leave the bottle. I'm going to cast Presentation and warm it. Yeah. Same thing. All right. I'll try and ignite it. Yeah. You see it kind of chars around the bottle, and you can see that it leaves a black-like stain of the, the smoke, and then it kind of <sighs> dissipates and cleans itself. I'm going to put my finger oh. on the tip. Huh. Wait a second. No, no, no. I'm going to use my mage hand to... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, your mage hand goes into the bottle, mm -hmm. and as it touches the liquid, your mage hand just stops and shakes, oh. and just sucks down in and dissipates. So it's <laughs> like it ate your mage. I hand. don't. I don't think you should put your finger in there. Okay, or maybe you should. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it just doesn't like magical hands. I don't know. Uh, it just it eats magic. Mm -hmm. But it also absorbs damage. So I take the bottle and put it on top of the, the, top of the chest. Chest is magic. Eat the chest. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, you, you place it on it, and the, like, the bottle stays motionless in your hands. And the chest is just, get key. I, I don't know how to get the key. <sighs> Need key. Wait. What are the balls made of in here? Obsidian. Same as the hallway? Correct. What's the floor? Obsidian? No, the floor is the same kind of like stone, like granite. Give it to me. Okay. I'll just throw it at the obsidian wall. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it throws it and it clanks off like it's metal. Does it look damaged? I mean, you can see like a little splinter in it, but the splinter just begins to reseal itself. I'm going to cork it. Wait. Give me the cork. Now? Do, do you want to try heating it now? No, give me the cork. Is the cork the fucking key? <laughs> well, I'll look at the cork. That's a cork. I'm going to put it towards the <laughs> chest. Yeah, I mean, you insert the cork into the chest. Not key. I put it back in No the games. I put it back in the bottle. Yeah, so you cork it back up. I turn it upside down when the cork is in there. Nothing happens. The cork is not the key. I'm gonna take uh, take one of those uh, GI bottles, mm -hmm. and uh, 
pour a little bit of... Pour a little Grimdar blood in yeah, there. Yeah, a little bit of Grimdar. Uh. As you pour the Grimdar blood, you see it ignites the liquid. So you pour blood in, and the liquid begins to just bubble and sizzle and smoke out. And it's the like room a kind magic of... blood. Yeah. <laughs> It's a magic eating bottle. I got magic blood. So I start to dump it out. So yeah, you just yeah. Welcome to the party, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And you just dump, and it just <laughs> only took you a year. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, the liquid, your blood, and the key all slosh out onto the ground, and it's in the liquid still. I'm gonna take one of the little daggers I have and just <laughs> move the key yeah. out of it. <laughs> Don't touch this. Don't touch <laughs> this. Yeah. And so I move it out, mm-hmm. and I use press digitation to clean it. Yep. So you clean the Nice key. and clean. Scrub it everywhere. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Flip really it sc- over. Oh, uh, yeah. Really uh, fucking. Uh, read like, it this, a bedtime story. This is going to be the nicest key everyone, anyone's ever seen. Sure. Absolutely. And I pick it up. Yep. Key's clean. You're good. I go over to the chest. Mm-hmm. Well, we abused. Yep. You go over to the abused chest, and you insert the key, and yep. the, the lock just immediately latches onto it. Ooh. And it turns itself for you. Like, you insert and it just... <laughs> and the lid opens. Okay. Do all of them open? Uh, yes, okay. simultaneously. So I take the key out. Mm-hmm. So the lid pops open. And then I take the key out. Yes. And it stays open. Correct. And there's no teeth. Nope. Uh, what's the chest? You see all of your magical items. <laughs> oh, <laughs> baby! What about the weapons? Huh? What about the weapons? Correct. Oh. It looks like a bottomless, like, pit. Oh, I strip! <laughs> Immediately, and I, I put all my stuff. I, t- on. I take my stuff out, and as I'm taking my clothes off, I'm just throwing all the stuff I've acquired into my bag of holding. It's all mine. Fuck this. Except Fuck the goggles. This. I keep the goggles on, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then I put all my other stuff back on. Yep. All of it. Mm-hmm. Wait, what's in the? So the one, two. What's in the other chest on the other side? I mean, it's distributed. All of your things okay. are distributed sure. amidst the three chests. My gloves. What do I get? I'm assuming not. What do I get? Your gloves are not I, in okay. there. Okay. Is the about, crown. What about their stuff? Mm-mm. No, what that rope? <laughs> Fucking rope. What about rope. the crown? The crown is not in there either. Okay. So the gloves and the crown are the two but pieces. But the rest of the yours. stuff is in there. Correct. Yeah. Uh, oh, baby. Mm-hmm. Even my potions? Mm-hmm. Uh. Yep. I mean, essentially, your bag of holding was just in there. Okay. What does that drink me potion do? Makes you drunk and stuff? Doesn't give you, like, strength or something? Mm. I tried to drug you with it. <laughs> <laughs> I did try to drug you. <laughs> I, I put all my stuff on. I don't think I don't think that would help you. Probably not. I put all well, my stuff what on. What will help you is some dust, <laughs> which I have a pound of, <laughs> and you should too. <laughs> no, I so, uh, sold mine. He sold his. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. I still have mine. Mm-hmm. I'll give you a couple hits. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, Grimdar. I'm not even kidding. Hold you time. should probably take a couple of hits. Okay. You remember what I said happens with the dust for levels of exhaustion? Nope. No. Removes one, but then at the conclusion of it, you suffer two. Oh, how long does it last? Eight hours. So it gives you eight hours of reduction of one penalty of exhaustion. How many do you have? Two, because you were unconscious-ish for two days because sure. i mean essentially you yeah. weren't immediately brought back to life right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. were dead for some time okay so you have a movement speed reduction and you have yeah. disadvantage on uh, so skill checks i'll take and out i'll take checks. out a line on my At finger what point of exhaustion do you die seven okay so i'm fine yeah i take so, out a line on my finger so how many hits are you doing <laughs> enough to remove the two penalties because then I'll have oh two but what? then you'll have four when it yeah, but I have to get to seven to die. You'll have to sleep like <laughs> 24 hours? You'll have to sleep for four days. <laughs> oh, my God. Because you, re- you can only recuperate the effect of one long rest in a 24-hour period. So you take these hits. You remove your penalties. At the conclusion of that eight hours, you either double down on dust. <laughs> <laughs> and then die. And potentially die. Or you could hit six feasibly. But, or no, sorry, because this is two, you're yeah. at two already, just, so it'd be four and then just six, so yes. Take, you'd be one shy of death. Just take one. Okay. So at six, just so you know, you're immobilized. Okay, yeah, You right. cannot not, move. Okay, we're not going to go there. I'll remove one level of exhaustion. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So Do you line. just have half movement Ooh. speed. Mm-hmm. All right, you good? You ready to go? Right. Yeah. Uh, what dust did you have? Onyx? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you also, during the time that you have the effects effect of the onyx dust on you you have an advantage on constitution saving throws okay. and you gain 10 temporary hit points Woo! grimdar we might want to take some of your blood <laughs> never know what it could be good for 
Yeah, but, I mean, it ignites. It ignites. Sh- Wait a second. Uh, as you <gasps> inhale the dust, sorry. Oh, okay. Make an intelligence saving throw. Oh my god, no! <laughs> I'm dumb. Not twenty. Let me in. <laughs> Look at that shit. <laughs> it just. It just tilted. It just tilted. <laughs> um, <sighs> mm, sign me up. You don't know what's happening. Hey, how you doing? Horrible. <laughs> what do you mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, I mean, a- as a general kind of like rule information thing uh you can take what's called a short rest where it's one hour of essentially downtime and then for the number of hit dice you have you roll those hit dice and regain that many hit points so you're level nine and you're a rogue with d8s you can roll 98 and regain that many hit points yeah yeah. So that means you guys are staying in here for one hour. I mean, so, can, like, do we have to sit down and like we can't look at anything? Or y- effectively, yes. Okay. Like you're taking equivocally a nap. I'm going to do the dust after, after that. Yes, <laughs> I know. That's <laughs> so what that I was going to say. We don't waste an hour of the eight before I lose mm-hmm. my mind. Yeah. But All you right. do not remove any penalties of exhaustion yeah. for it completing a short rest. It's exclusively yep. a long rest. Sure. So right. we'll say that you kind of hide in here on either sides and just kind of okay. nestle in and just conclude a quick hour-long short rest. Bran, you regain however many hit points it is that you roll. I was already at 99. <laughs> 99. I'm good to go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do Ast- strip naked before. Astri does demand that you cuddle as well. Okay. I sit next to Bran. Come here, Bran. <laughs> For warmth. What? It's I'm not. Cold. I'm not cold. I'm cold. Get off me. Hug me. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea what I've been through, and you're gonna touch me. I was dead. <laughs> I just want a hug. Okay. All right. That's sure. Yeah. Great. You're making int saves, and you're getting close to me. I like this. Can you hug, Bran. Yeah. Make an intelligent saving throw. Ah! <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> now, so far, you have uh, successes, so you're good. Cool. Great. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, please. Grimdar's adorable little bubble you blood chat is back. Roll your 8D whatever. What? For HP regeneration. I'm alright. I'm almost done. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be full. Okay. Okay. So, we conclude our short rest. Nobody has entered. I mean, this is the doctor's room. Like, nobody yeah. comes in here except yeah. for uh, the doctor. Mm-hmm. Dr. Seuss. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, okay. So. All good. I guess, yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, I do my dust. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you do your dust. Mm-hmm. And you just, <sighs> you feel reinvigorated. You feel more powerful than previous. Good. Great. <laughs> yeah. And you have, like I said, all of your things back except for your crown and, and bink your bonks. bink bunks. Yep. Understood. Mm-hmm. Obvious. Dane's going to have them. Going to have to kill him. Uh, when you awaken... Uh, you guys had left the three lids of the chests open. Uh, no. No. Well, okay. yeah, I guess we would have. Yeah. Okay. So, good. Because now on the ground in the center of the room, what looks like is covered in saliva, you see a very small leather-bound journal. But it's covered in saliva. It is not in the same embryonic goo, but it looks like it's covered in spit. Is it in front of anything? No. It's literally in the center of the room like it's been spit out. Of the chest. Of the chest. That's why I wanted to clarify that you guys had left it open. What happens if I put a chest in a chest and then a chest in a chest? There's chest and chest and chest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When you open one, all three would open. You would have to go through Whoa. one to open up, or to get to the bottom ones. Kind of like uh, the Russian dolls. How heavy are they? 200-ish pounds. All right, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to prank whoever comes in here next. That's all I wanted to do. Brand, what's... What's that? I don't know. I'm not touching anything anymore. (laughs) Can you clean it? Yeah. You dissipate the saliva and clean the book. I'll pick it up. Yep. Start flipping through. Yeah. Uh, So you see that this is the doctor's, Dr. Foley, his journal. Uh, Foley Firehand. Uh Mm -hmm. Makes sense why you could open the door. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Why could uh, Finn win, though? What do you mean, open what door? The door to get into this. No, he touched the mountain. Wall. The wall. The wall? The wall was not fire hand based. Oh, yeah, okay. that was a one way. The wall trip. was just exclusively the location oh, to get into the cell. Okay. Sure. The obsidian door is exclusively there for fire yeah. hands to got enter okay. or exit through. Okay. The doctor goes through that one essentially because nobody's really permitted at the excavation site. That's sure. his secret entrance okay. that he had to fuck with Grimdar. Great. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Good. Extra experiments. Great. Off the book. Great. Good stuff. Great. Here's the book, by the way. <laughs> yeah, not the book. It's going to talk about that. <laughs> but it's not in the book. It's going to be in this book. This oh. is his private journal. That's okay. why it was spit out on the ground. Do, 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 because do, once do, the chests are... <laughs> Grimdar, that's... That's a fire hand? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you can see that Dr. Uh, fully fire hand is Dane's younger brother. Uh, he... So, recounts a, a little bit more in detail about the Firehand family. Uh, Dane is over 300 years old. Foley was close to 300 years old. Um, Foley recounts a story of about 200 years ago, when the ground shook and the Underdark began to break and crumble. These chasms, these crevices in the Underdark began to open, and monsters began to pour out of these holes in the Underdark. And that has been primarily what the Grey Dwarves here have been battling uh, for the last 200 or so years. And now he has, in his later years in life, as he has begun to descend into madness, he's become, he, he goes over and over again pages about his obsession with attempting to understand what these monsters are and how their abilities work because of what they can do to the people that they overtake. Which they're beholders? No. No. These are mind flayers. Oh. Yay. Great. Yes. Good. Yeah. Okay. Don, mm -hmm. did you watch Stranger Things? Yeah. Mind flayers bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not good. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, you can tell that Dr. Foley has begun to understand that part of the abilities of the mind flayers are a very unique and particular kind of magic that is unorthodox compared to what everyone else's magics are able to be. Uh, you know the schools of magic from times you've talked to people about, like, evocation and sure. abjuration and transmutation. Uh, this one he describes as mind magic, or what he calls psionics. Wait, he would know it? Well, not him, but, like, he's heard other people talk about magics and, like, the schools of magic. You would have, yes, <laughs> essentially. You also, with becoming an arcane trickster, would have talked about, like, enchantment magic and things like that during downtime that yeah. we don't. Yeah, he knows I'm looking for pictures. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the drawing? Where's, where's so, yeah, I mean, you see very crude, like... <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> this isn't the very hungry Please, please don't. No, don't draw it. Don't draw it, John. <laughs> don't. See, oh, horrible yeah. drawings. <laughs> what is that? This, that looks like Finwin. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Ash, that's what Finwin looks like. <laughs> it's a very angry cloud. A very angry cloud. <laughs> or a very happy cloud. What, what does it say? And I, I guess I'll try to read it over his shoulder. Yes. So Wait, as we <laughs> predicted this. It's the sun. It's happy. Dane's dead. <laughs> predicted. Well, no, no, no. It's the, the sun commercial. from the, that level in Mario. It's going to attack us. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, as you're reading through it, though, you can see that these monsters were not the first ones that appeared out of these holes. These ones have only been appearing for the last 50 or so years. That in the beginning, when monsters began to pour out of the lower layers of the Underdark through these chasms, it was the things that he now uses as slaves and has imprisoned in his workshop, those hook horrors. So he describes them as horrific beasts that are essentially mutations of creatures that they were familiar with, but something must have happened to them to transform them and transfigure them into whatever horrible visages that they eventually did have. Uh, so, like, the hook hands, the different, like, boils and things like that, he attributes to some kind of magic or experimental thing that has been done on these creatures by what he now calls mind flares. Great. Yeah. Um, he then, uh, towards the end of his journal, begins uh, detailing how he discovered upon finding one of these mind flayers because Dane has been battling them with the other gray dwarves here in the area. That's why the, um, the hole is uh, encased in obsidian. 
Uh, that is what they believe is one of the only materials that they have been able to essentially contain them to prevent them from passage out. Uh, That's why it's important that the hole, the room that the hole is in, stays sealed with the obsidian doors and that nothing digs in or out. Um, Great. (laughs) So... Ah, good, because we did. (laughs) So, great. Very good. Uh We're fucked. (laughs) You, you were also kept in a room with an obsidian door. Correct. Um, so you can see that <laughs> he has, uh, with Dane's help, uh, been able to keep one captive. He captured one and was capable of keeping it inside a locked obsidian room. <laughs> <laughs> Grimdar, that sounds like your room. <laughs> No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Don't tell me that. Grimdar, you Don't woke up in there. Right you were now. there for like five seconds. Uh, I looked at the room. I was in there for like ten minutes. Oh, I just God. got back. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. Curse. This was several years ago. Oh, thank God. The Mind God. Flayer died in captivity. But during its, it's like time in world. captivity, uh, uh, Foley was capable of understanding various elements of the, the, the anatomy of it. The um, kind of like embryonic development of it, the way it extracts and eats brains, the way that they communicate uh, with telepathy, that they don't traditionally speak, that if they do speak, it is a a garbled kind of iffy, similar. But not actually that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say if he's oh, you mean like <laughs> kind of the way he was struggling to speak earlier? Correct. Yeah, correct. great. He was like eating his brain. Correct. Great. Uh, and that he believed that the next step in his own evolution was to transcend into one of these creatures, believing that if it ate his brain, if he developed one uh, and attached it to him in his own sight, he thought that if it ate his brain, he would potentially transfer some sense of his consciousness into whatever this was going to become. Nope. And this would have burn, burn the correct. shit out of it. And that this would have become his next life. This was like his ascension. No extra life for him. Correct. <laughs> you beat the piss out of him. Would it have been? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Make an intelligence saving. <laughs> <laughs> Grimdar, Grimdar, don't worry. I burned his body. Uh, okay. Are you okay? A two. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> That's not goodbye. <laughs> bye bye. Oh, good thing you don't have any of your good stuff. Uh, <laughs> so you feel something in your head. Like you feel almost like a squirming sensation in your skull. Mm-hmm. Oh god. Mm-hmm. And you feel it just kind of rattling around in your brain. Mm-hmm. It feels cold. Great. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Gr- Grimdar, I, I burned the body. It's fine. Do you, does he make any sort of action? Have or I made just... the connection that the bottle also felt cold? Mm-hmm. I'm going to take one of the vials of my blood and dump it on myself. Where on yourself? My head. So you pour it on your head? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you pour the blood on your head and just kind of like remove your helmet quickly and just bathe your face and your, your hair in your own blood. And it just kind of like becomes a little bit greasy and sticky and sticks to your scalp a little bit more. Grimdor, what are you doing? And you're just... There's something in my head. <laughs> Again? Didn't we already do this before? There's always Another something puppet? in Grimdor's head. No. What do you mean? Like a squid. I look at it, one of the jars. Does it look or does it feel like that? It's the same similar cold. That similar chill. No, I'm pointing at like one of the little squids rattling, the little fucking things. Yeah. Does it feel like that is in your so head? So one of the things that Foley describes in the anatomy of the mind flares is their particular uh, quality of skin that whenever a goblin would make contact with it, this, the goblin's hand would become chilled, go numb, and the goblin would complain of a feeling, a sensation of critters crawling around despite not seeing any. Almost as though something is like permeating through the skin. Uh, <laughs> I was right! Put it back! Put it back! <laughs> Put what back? You My just dumped blood! The, you, you dumped we it all in several. your head? You said there were several. I said one of the vials. Okay. So yes. And we only used a little bit from the one that I used. Okay. Put it back! So you kind of like <laughs> whoa, whoa, peel Grimdark, this wound Grimdark? open again and begin pouring your yeah. blood in? Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, you just start <laughs> desperately pouring blood in. You still feel a chill in your head. Grimdar, Grimdar, I think we should take it with us Your, if this is your blood. And, and maybe we can put it back later. We need to get out of here. Okay. Okay? Are you ready? All right, do your first line. <laughs> the last thing that Foley writes in his journal in terms of a description of the anatomy of it is that the Mind Flayers uh, despise light and they despise heat. <laughs> do you do that? Yeah. So you take your hands <laughs> and you no, just... Grimdar, Grimdar, wait. Grimdar, do I read heat. this too? I mean, yeah. Grimdar? What? That's what I see you do. Grimdar, wait. I gotta cook wait. my brains. Wait, 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 wait. I gotta heat it up. <laughs> Grimdar, don't microwave your fucking brain. Please. No, I don't know what a microwave is. Grimdar. fire hands. Yeah, don't, don't heat it up. Because if it starts squirming... It might bite. Okay. Okay? How do we get it out? I don't know. <laughs> I, it doesn't say that it'll die. It just says it doesn't like heat or light. So I put on the goggles. <laughs> and I'm going to look. Let's do this first. And I'm going to get his face close and, <laughs> and right into his eyes. Let me see if I see anything, boy. <laughs> just open his peepers. And I so shine like, the light oh. in. Yeah, so you feel something very quickly begin squiggling around in your skull. Just okay. And you begin like almost convulsing. Yeah, okay. so like all you right. begin right. right. you begin foaming at the mouth. <laughs> oh, Jesus. oh, okay, Grimdar, uh calm down, calm down to slap him. <laughs> mm -hmm. You good? Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't like the light. No. Because you don't like the no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where's Finn? <laughs> um, let's just get to the surface. Okay. Okay. No. What do you mean no? What do you mean no? Uh, there's a lot of light up there. Yeah, but only during the day. <laughs> okay. We gotta get. I'm look at. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pull you by the beard and pull you closer. <laughs> we gotta get you to the wizards. Okay. <laughs> Get the fuck we out of here. We have to go see the wizard. <laughs> we gotta, we're off to see the wizard. Yeah, we gotta go. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do one last glance at the room. Do I notice anything different? Mm -mm. Anything like other than the blood or the squids? Nope. You can see that there's still, you know, the several vials of the embryonic liquid, and, you know, none of them, like I said, have the squids in them. You wanna grab one of the vials? Yep. Okay. Yep. Did you just drink it? No, I put it in my bag. Okay. Oh. Because I was going to say, I was going to try that. <laughs> the wonderful wizard of get this squid out of my head. <laughs> I like that wizard. <laughs> it's a good one. Mm -hmm. So none of them have it in it? I thought they did because you said they were shaking. No, no, no. They're vibrating, but you don't see squids in them. Oh, uh, fuck. Okay. Yeah. 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 I can't wait to pull that out later. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one of these in the pack. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Uh, let's uh, get the fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. yep. We can check on Olive again, but I don't I don't think she's any different. I nope. think she's been taken by something. Probably one of those. Okay. You know, from the book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to exit the room. So we walk out of the room. Yep. And we step back into the workshop. Yeah, we don't see anything in there before we step in, right? We're like, so, I mean, as you peep in, you can see that standing inside of the cage is a similar silhouette to the Mind Flayer that you fought inside of Grimdar's uh, jail cell. You see that kind of, like, similar pulsating, elongated head. You see tendrils. Do like, I see a corpse anywhere? You see tentacles. No, you don't see a dead body but you see tentacles kind of wrapped around the bars of the cage. It looks like it's too big to get out. Correct. So it's like head is hitting the height of the cage. How tall is the cage? Oh. Like nine-ish feet, ten-ish feet. Oh, this is some Slenderman shit we gotta go. And okay. you hear both of you no. a voice in your head. <laughs> I mean, it's telepathic communication. It's 120 feet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm putting the goggles back on and turning the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, so you hear a voice in your head, and it sounds like Olive. Oh, no. But almost like disconnected. Like, similar to how the doctor's voice was transmuting uh -huh. through various, like, tones and pitches as though there was something mm -hmm. wrong with it. 
and you hear Allah's voice just, Guys, you have to get me out of here, please. Please, I don't want them to touch me. Again. Bad doctor. Bad doctor. Help. <laughs> I'm going to open the door a little bit and just... <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh, I didn't hear that. It doesn't know. <laughs> Don't walk away from me. I'm going to turn towards it. Mm -hmm. Still like this. Yep. <laughs> like a deer? You see yeah. pressed against the cage, like the bars of the cell, you see these tentacles slowly like slithering oh, out towards you guys. Oh, God. How close are they? Are but they... you also see what looks like from the cheeks up the same kind of like pale lavender skin oh. of your friend Olive and oh. like her eyes. Oh. Just the face, like the maw of like a tentacled creature. Just... It can't get me. Help. <laughs> <laughs> Do you shine light at it? Yeah. So you burst light in the general area in the direction of this thing and it shrieks and it backs away from the cage and it kind of loses itself in the shadow of the bars i'm gonna turn towards the door <laughs> and bolt <laughs> oh, oh grimdar we gotta go okay yeah uh, <laughs> i'm gonna run make yep. intelligence saving throws yeah of course as they cast mind blast in your area oh it's in between uh re roll it that's 19 fine. 19? Yep. So you succeed. You will not Come be on, stunned. Come on, not another two. Ooh. 11 plus 9, 20. 20. So yeah, both of you succeed. <laughs> uh, you will go. not take the damage. Or you will not take the uh, stun effect. Great. Wait, what? Is the damage halved? Hold on. Oh, no. You do succeed, and you do not take the damage. That's the benefit of intelligence oh. saving throws, is that if you dodge, you dodge entirely. So you feel this, like, blast of energy emanating out, very similar to what happened in the jail cell, and it presses, like, you closer to the wall. Like, you feel it in your head, and you feel pressed, oh. and you once more very quickly get that vision, almost like an out-of-body experience of, like, you're floating second over the Second time hole. for me, first Correct. time for Grimdar. So, second time for you, and you feel like you're just floating over the hole, just looking down, and you see deep, deep through the dark, and at the bottom of it, you see this enormous, what looks like an embryonic sack, that looks like it's maybe a hundred-ish feet in diameter. Oh my god! But it's not like there's a squid inside of it. You see what looks like a brain pulsating. And this oh. is the this is the this is not this is not the dig site. This is the the one where Finwin was digging. No, no, no. This is the excavation, excavation site, site where the uh, Doctor Foley took you guys. And you just <gasps> and run to the door. Uh huh. <laughs> you slide the door open. Yep. And then I push Bran out and I shut that shit immediately. And as you push it, you, because this is, can still communicate telepathically, it uh -huh. is not blocked by doors. You, as you turn and close the door, just say, You will be one with me. No. <laughs> oh, thanks. That's so fucking great. I didn't order hurts. any of that brain shit. <laughs> no. That's. <laughs> <laughs> you will be. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Such a good no, no, what? Because it only said it to him, right? No, no, no. You heard it as well. It can speak pel telepathically to multiple things. <laughs> no. No. My intelligence is 20. Fuck off. <laughs> get, get the fuck out of here. And you are standing here, having just closed the obsidian door here. And you just. Are in a hallway. A hallway I recognize? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. This hallway is the one that is right outside. The, uh, it's a very small hallway that leads right to the obsidian door at the hole. Nope. Going back to the stairs. Grimdar, you gotta stay quiet. What? Do I know? So what? how long no. has it been? Is it almost lunchtime? Is it time for the beatings? <laughs> no! <It is. laughs> we gotta go. Grimdar. Uh, we might need to lay low for a bit. 
depends. Okay. If you hear loud boots clanking, they're made for walking, Grimdar. And you hear <laughs> no heavy boots clank. Are they on clank, the way down to us? Clank. No, you hear them in the hallway. Like they're kind of a distant echo, but you do hear clanging in the distance. <laughs> Great. Okay, well, Grimdar, follow me. Okay. We'll proceed down the hallway. So you go up this hallway. This is another one that had, um, it's like a T-shaped intersection. So this back way was towards the workshop. This way is the obsidian door for the hole. This way is left back towards where your jail cells would be. Is that the way to get to the stairs or do I have to go straight? Uh, there are technically multiple ways to get to the stairs. The shortest way, not near the clanking. <laughs> uh, so that would be <laughs> through the hole back through the tunnel that Mafsy dug. Yup. Why are you smiling? Because <laughs> he just said the shit about there not being able to, the fucking beholders not being able to get out. Mind people. <laughs> just said it. Literally just said it. Yeah, but Literally we were, we were, I, I've already been in there. Yeah, but you're going to go in and he's going to be right there. As soon as you get in there. I also don't have a key anymore, so I'd have to use the bones. You have motherfucker. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, right. I'm the key. Are you, what? I'm, I can open all the doors. Oh, do mm -hmm. you just know that? He you've only seen like two. He you've only seen like the... Grimdar. You've only seen like two doors. Slap, slap. All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to go past the hole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as you're running, do you want to run or do you want to walk in a more stealthy manner? <sighs> walk stealthily. We want to walk stealthily. Dargrim, okay. Radmirg, Grimdar, Finwan. Okay. <laughs> we want to. Finn Juan Kenobi. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we walk stealthily. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as we're walking by, you hear Dane's boots. Okay. You also hear a very thin, frail, echoing goblin girl's voice. <sighs> no! I don't know where they went! I promise! I promise! Oh, Jesus. Oh, she helped us. Oh. And you hear the poor okay, voice know, of Mapsy. I don't know who she is. Yeah. Screaming out for help. Who, who is that? How many boots did I hear? One pair. No. Who, who is it? It's a goblin. She helped us. She, 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 she helped me and Finn. Because I recognize the boots, correct? Correct. You recognize the boots as Dane's because of that very heavy clanging. It's, it's Dane. Dane has her. Mm -mm -mm. Yep, yep, with I one... take the sword out and I start walking. S S Grimdar? I gotta kill him. You have a penalty of exhaustion. I gotta kill him. Grimdar. He may not no, be. I my movement speed. He may not have any weapons. <laughs> I gotta kill him. <laughs> I mean, we can walk towards that area, I guess. Yeah. So, I mean, you can Slowly. step out and look down that section of the hallway. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you step and you hit that part of the intersection and you both peer around the hallway. And you see at the opposite end, walking in just his loincloth and his big ass boots, holding Mathsy by the hair. Oh. And he's just walking here. Towards us? Uh, no, he would be walking towards this turn that is about 10 feet from where he is. So this is the hallway that was about 60 feet in length and about 10 feet in. There's the turn to the right that goes back towards your jail cells. So you guys are just kind of like barely peeking out. So I won't say that he would realistically see you because he's essentially distracted by his conversation with Mafsy. But you two are- We only see him? You just see him holding Mafsy. Well, if we're gonna do it, now would be the chance. I'm killing him. We should get close first. Okay. I don't know what his perception is. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So are you, what, permitting him to make that turn? Uh, how far back would we be? About 60 feet? Yes, you're 60 feet at the other end of the hallway because this is genuinely where you having half yeah. movement speed is going to matter. Yep. Because Bran, if he went at regular intervals of speed, would get there faster. But He'll Dane is already going at 25. Yes. Get ready. Yeah. So are you permitting him to... Is turn? there a light down here? Yeah, there's torches. Right. There's no, torches uh, on the sides of the wall. I'll, yeah, as he turns, I'll 
go, I guess. Okay. Yep. So he turns, and you hear the boots suddenly stop. So just gonna, huh? And you kind of like lean back out. Yep. No, 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 lean back out of vision. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And you just hear Dane yell at Mafsi, "Why is there blood on my grounds? Where are they?" I don't know. Go, go. So, if I peer back out, where is he? You like... do not see him. It's like he had walked into that other okay. uh, intersection for the yep. hallway. Gonna... Yeah, so you guys begin Sneak on over. stealthily continuing to walk out. Yep. So you kind of hear his voice get louder in anger, and you hear Mafsy begin to just scream like she's in pain. Just, oh, let go! Where are my prisoners... Go. And continue to walk. Oh yeah. I'm huh. we I'm following enough that I can do this because okay. I have to, sixty feet, so I have to move a little bit at the very least. Mm -hmm. So you guys and you hit right at the edge for where that is. And you hear the boots begin to step as though they are turning back in this direction for the blood stains, because this is where you had killed the one patrol guard. So he's stepping back towards us? Correct, so he'd be walking back towards you guys. So I'm gonna draw it, and I'm gonna split him. I mm -hmm. pull to be behind him. And mm -hmm. lean, and yeah, I'm gonna let him come behind, and then I'm gonna lean back against the wall. Mm-hmm, okay. So, I mean, he's holding Mafsi, mm -hmm. so he steps out into the hallway, and you both see Dane Yep. standing here. Just and Dane's seeing you holding Mafsy. Yep. Make your attack rolls, I guess. Do I have an advantage since I'm surprising him? Uh, no, that's not like it's not like you're catching him completely off guard. Like he is very heightened aware because yeah. he's following a trail of fucking blood in this direction. Okay. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Okay. Uh, Fifteen plus eight. So Roll your damage. Seven and then the two D eight radiant. It's twelve total. Twenty two for the first hit. Okay. Twenty two for the first hit. Okay. Twenty two. Okay. Continue. I mean you you have extra attack, yep. like I'm permitting you this full opportunity. So fifteen again, fifteen uh, plus eight. Twenty six. Okay. Yeah. Oh boy. Ten. Ten. So twenty five. Twenty five. Plus sneak attack. Twenty nine. Plus thirteen. And then extra attack. Mm -hmm. Didn't you already do that? No, I did you my did second your bonus attack. action. Yeah. yeah. So eighteen plus eight. Yep, that'll hit. And then so is it? It's seven, and then seven damage. Okay. And then my temporary hit points. Okay. So you guys ambush Dane, and simultaneously with all of your might. Slash and stab into Dane as he just slightly rounds the corner and sees the blood trail and looks up and sees the two of you once more in full regalia and just pounce at him, desperately cutting into him, dealing a total of 118 damage to Dane in his unarmored state, outside of his boots, which I'm not going to say really increases yep. his armor class. So as you plunge your weapons into him, he releases Mafsi and just looks down and you see all over his body 
you see these slashes and the stab marks as you cut into him deeply. And you can see that, like, his tattoos are being coated in blood. And he looks at both of you. Oh. That's my line. (laughs) Oh. Good to see you both. So good to see you both. Make perception checks. (laughs) Oh, no. No! Uh, 26. 26. 17. You can see that Dane's eyes are glowing with a hint of purple. Great. Lovely. And you can see (sighs) on the back of his neck, you can see a very small, like, outer shell of what looks like an egg. Oh, Oh, why would he do that? Bad choice. My brother was oh so wise to find you. Oh, so wise. (laughs) Make intelligent saving throws. Oh, fuck. Four. Nineteen. Nineteen? Okay. So, you're passing. You are not. Yep. Uh, Anyone in chat want to roll the 10 d10 uh, (laughs) psychic damage? Forty-three. 43. <laughs> oh man! And you are stunned for one minute. Yep. Uh, you also have to make a wisdom saving throw. A wisdom saving throw yeah, for frightful presence. Oh man! Wowzers! Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it fall. <laughs> 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 Yeah, so you don't see (laughs) tentacles in his face. You don't see anything strange about his appearance other than the the glamorous purple in his eyes. And you see the quick pulsation on the back of his neck. Oh. Mm, My brother didn't get it right for him. But he got it right for me. So you are frightened, uh, which means that he would have advantage on attack rolls and things of that nature against you. But for you, for your movement, you feel obligated to run away. And you're stunned. Hmm. Oh. And he just kind of like looks and he sees the little... Mm-hmm. Mark in your neck. Hmm. No. You can go. Because you'll be back. <laughs> you'll be back. You are a fire hand. And he picks up Mafsy. Oh. And he turns away and begins walking down the hallway towards the jail cells, completely fucking ignoring you. And you hear this quick clanging of something on the ground, and it catches your eye as it just rolls into your sight, and you see a small black coin roll and drop to its side at your feet. not good! And you hear a voice in your head communicating to you telepathically. You are family (laughs) after all. And we're going to stop there. (laughs) Oh. Oh. no. Oh, no. Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, boy. He didn't frighten me. He was going to the dark realm. Mm-hmm. We were... Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I don't want to fight any more white flyers. Oh. Chat, <laughs> that is the episode for today. Um, I just want to thank you guys for 
a year, a year of this campaign. You guys have been here. Some of you threw multiple changes from my channel. I've been streaming almost three years now, and you've been here from me playing League, switching to other games and playing League a little bit, adding D&D &D into it, and now doing all D&D. &D. Um, you guys are still here supporting me, uh, and I honestly could not ask for a better community than you guys. Um, you guys are, are, are just constantly supportive and are just always here for us no matter what we need. Uh, and it makes me very happy to have a community that is not only supportive of us, but supportive of each other. You guys hang out and play games together and, and just hang out in the Discord and chat with all the new people and greet everybody. Um, I really could not ask for anybody better than you guys. So seriously, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for everything that you guys do uh, and, and continue to do. You guys are, are the best. I love you guys. Welcome back, Grimdar. Welcome back, Grimdar, for now. <laughs> Uh, my brain's gone. Behold my last bit. Thank you, Luna. Um, I'm going to go into my office and do the, the giveaways once we get up here. Uh, so I'll, I'll be pulling three people. The first one will be for the dice. The second one will be for the shirt. The third one will be for the candle. Um, if somebody outside of the U.S. happens to win the candle, I will swap the prizes around because um, I can't ship that to outside the U.S. because it's large-ish, so it would be colossally expensive. Um but I don't know if anybody else wants to say anything after a year. I mean, fuck, dude. Like, I remember beginning this shit with you guys in the jungle and everybody that first episode being just very tentative in terms of what the rule sets meant and you guys not being sure. Because especially for you with it being your first time fucking ever, like, getting into the jungle and, like, him absentmindedly having to climb a tree because of the fucking poison from the plant. That, to me, is still one of the most defining aspects yep. of the fucking show. Yeah. Is you climbing up into a tree and yelling, Where's the ship? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the ship? <laughs> Gotta get back. Uh, where is it, though? Mm -hmm. Never forget who threw the banana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> threw the banana. <laughs> the <Brand> fucking <laughs> plant. Brand no. hell. I mean, like, look at, in terms of even just story direction, like how far we've come from you oh, guys yeah. just being... You know, oh him God. being a stowaway, you being a quartermaster. Like, we came a, a long-ass way, and we've we've suffered through some pretty fucking heavy damn losses. Oh, yeah. But in terms of, you know, accomplishments, you guys have stood stood up to every test that I have given you in quite, quite interesting fashions most of the time. Um, That's a good way to describe it. <laughs> I mean, I, I know that I make this game uh, very difficult. Like I've said to you before, off stream, uh, one of the things that I know I've, I've done incorrectly is the abundance of extremely powerful magical items. Uh, but I think that it becomes very intriguing to give you guys like very unique individualized things like whenever anybody plays this game, everybody has battle master fighter things when they pick a battle master yeah. fighter. Only you have Tarhan's sword. Yeah. Only you guys have the fucking cloaks. Only you have the boots of darkness. Yep. Like those things are to me uniquely defining aspects of the game. Yep. You know, but I don't know. It's been fucking fun as shit and the story is something that I am uh, proud of in, in many ways, even though I know I fuck everyone over a lot. <laughs> you guys And continue to. <laughs> yeah, I mean Hey, you were in a dungeon no, where there's yeah, fucking yeah. mind flayers. Yeah, like. you instantly killed my friend. Yay. We almost just died. Mm -hmm. Yeah, genuinely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you had died to that mind flayer, that would have been your brain. And we would have brand the brainless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I. again, it's one of those things where uh, it, it's always difficult in DMing knowing that you are DMing for friends, people you genuinely care about, but wanting to make a game that has challenging elements and aspects to it where you do not want to feel like you're just handing them victory yeah. over and over again. And it's difficult to create combat that is challenging without the presence of death. Yep. And it's something that... Yeah, I was definitely there today. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Help, help. Yeah, I mean, for that that singular mind flare, like, that, I didn't alter its stat block whatsoever. That's oh, just yeah. a fucking mind flare. Yep. Like, those things, when eventually we hit um, 
you know, the, potentially the, the greater, more elevated ones if we continue to do storyline things in the Underdark here with Dane's Fortress and with the presence of the Mind Flare kind of like invasion here. Um, I would personalize and more uniquely do Mind Flayers. Sure. Because uh, that, that's what Dane uh, essentially is. He's becoming some kind of... I, I also just, as, as a person, I love the idea of transmutation. I love the idea of like these horrific amalgamations of things. Yep. I love giving you guys similar things to that where you you have abilities that are not remotely battle master fighter abilities. Like uh, I like making characters that are unique and terrifying in their own regard. Like I've really liked doing the underdark stuff just because uh, yeah, I mean that that passion I have for horror is, yep. I think, on its best display. Oh, man, <laughs> yeah, sure that is. that shit was horrifying. Uh -huh. If we didn't bring Swift with us, we were dead. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Dead. If they had rolled high enough, could they have killed him in that attack? Yes. Yes. Um, uh, I mean, it's it's one eighteen. It was close. It's, I mean, I'm not going to give you it. Also, Dane's going to continue to go through phases of transmutation. So his hit point total at this point was 163. Uh, mm. So you guys were close-ish. Yeah, but not able to get there in Correct. the attack. Correct. Yeah. I mean, did you pop any Battlemaster shit? <clears throat> no, but I don't have most of it up, I don't think. Uh, you would have completed long rests when yeah, you were told unconscious. You. Oh, that was sure. why you were at full hit points. Okay. Yeah. The only thing I could have potentially seen you doing is maybe that, but even still, it adds like 1d10 yeah, damage. You're not, not going to kill him. No. Um, well, we could have, like, I mean, I could have gotten an extra attack. Possibly. Extra two attacks in. It's still unlikely to make up that much damage, yeah. though. Because you guys were, you know, 38 ish or whatever off. Yeah. But I mean, like, that's why I gave you guys that opportunity because that is. Uh, I believe 100% in rewarding your players for creativity. I handle surprise and things like that very differently from the way you're supposed to do it um, because I give you guys that opportunity to genuinely surprise and ambush people, and I know you do the same. Traditionally, yeah. when you surprise somebody, you still roll initiative. Sure. So, like, yeah, really? yeah, that's how surprise works. Surprise hmm. is something where at the beginning... We have advantage, though? Like, is it's that... not advantage. So what happens for actual surprises, according to rules as written, is everybody rolls initiative once you declare a thing that is going to begin combat. Everybody rolls initiative. Creatures that are surprised have their traditional initiative. So we would go, still like usual, top of the order. Once something so say dane rolled a 19 for his initiative and you rolled a 17 dane would go first in combat he's surprised so he's incapable of taking an action okay but then it comes to your turn but for you say you were like an assassin rogue where you have um against surprise targets all of your hits are criticals dane loses the surprise condition once he has gone through his order in the turn i think it's very gimmicky i think yeah, it's something that's, that's dumb. i think it's something that's very punishing to particular classes because yeah. you know that that assassin rogue can build entirely to be able to do something like that but you know it's you can roll a 3 and it yeah. doesn't matter that your dex bonus is like fucking 7 or an 8 dane can just roll an 18 and like yeah. that feels that feels bad yeah Thank you for the follow, Foozle Killer. Uh, yeah, but I mean, in, in regards to the rules, I mean, everybody makes mistakes in DMing. Yeah. Uh, I know I'm not remotely perfect when it comes to rule sets. I know there are still, like, conditional things that I do that are wrong. But I believe in what happens in the moment is fine. I mean, especially if it's something where everybody discusses it and it makes sense logically. I think that's what's more appropriate than yeah. just continuously following rules as written. Yep. I mean, a good example that I saw earlier was like a clip of the people from Critical Role completely fucking up the spell Bless. And like Bless is a level one spell yeah. that they've been using for 60 plus episodes. <laughs> and one of the players completely fucks up what the spell Bless does. Yep. So like everybody makes mistakes. So please don't think that like any of the times when you guys like make an error, nobody is going to be able to play Dungeons and Dragons completely perfectly. It's not a game like Magic where there's like sequencing and you know like yeah. you're out, you're high percentage plays. You just, you make decisions. I think that's what makes it very enjoyable because yep. it makes the role playing feel valuable because it's not like anybody's fault. Like, sure, you miss things, you misremember something, you forget something, it's going to happen. What matters at the end of the day is that everybody has a good fucking time and that we tell an interesting story. And I think so far we've, we've thankfully done both of those things. Yep. Just want to thank John for buying my dinner later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> 
Paul, anything you want to add? What do you say? mean? I, I almost had a fucking heart attack earlier. What do you mean? I mean, not for the, for the, for the year. It's great. It's great. Characters almost died <laughs> on the year special. Mm-hmm. You scumbag. <laughs> Jesus, put us up against the Mind Flayer. Why are you like this? That's my uh, question mind, for you. Mind Flayer is a CR7. I'm going to just know why are you like this, John. So the two of you combined as level nines. Uh, he, that, died immediate, he died on turn one. Mm-hmm. Died on turn one. Mm-hmm. Help. Mm-hmm. Why, why mm-hmm. does it blast for that much damage? What is it, 10d10? 10d10, uh, yeah. No, sorry. I Actually, that was one that I misremembered also. It was 10d10 is the brain eating. Um... Mm-hmm. The, the psychic is... So we took less damage, Chad. Correct. Which means Finn isn't dead! <laughs> He's alive! No, no, no. Finn was dead. Okay. Uh, it was the 68. I was yeah. I was oh, it's 68? Okay. Yeah. Mm. Oh, my goodness. But I mean... That still hit for me for 31. Correct. Yeah. Like, <gasps> it's still an abundance of damage. <gasps> um, yep. But, see, I mean, one of the things that I do love is that you guys enjoy you know, theorying about this game because now that we've seen something is fucking wrong with Dane, yep. like it, it brings into question since when has this been a thing for Dane? It brings into question what Dane's motives are and how much of this actually is Dane Firehand. Yep. Um, but that's why we have the D&D spoilers chat in the Discord mm-hmm. so you guys can talk about it and theorize about things. Mm-hmm. But anyway, we're going to go get some food. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go run into my office and do the giveaway. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys for a year. Um, let's all raise a glass of whatever you've got in front of you. Two cups of coffee. Two mm-hmm. cups of coffee. Thank you guys for a year. I love you. We will see you on uh, Tuesday for Tales of Sutton North. Thank you guys. Goodbye. Fucking cheers. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.